The American Kennel Club National Championship is a celebration of all that we love about dogs. Loyal companions who delight and amaze us. Seasoned athletes with heart and the standard bearers who embody the ideals of their breeds. The red carpet is rolled out. The lights are on in the main show ring here at the largest dog show in the nation. Champions have been crowned, but many are still left to name. At the end of the night, the main event, a best in show to be awarded on this, the final day of the AKC National Championship presented by Royal Canaan. The Orange County Convention Center in Orlando, Florida has been the site of, let's face it, the epicenter of the dog universe over the past week, and it all culminates with best in show at the 2018 AKC National Championship. Hi, everybody. Welcome to Orlando. Russ Thaler with Gina DiNardo from the AKC. Gina, what does this night mean for the dog world? Well, this is the largest dog event in North America. It is by far one of the most prestigious events in all the world. People work all year long to try to get here. And at the end of the night, there is one national championship, and you can only do that here. And it's actually a two-night event because there's so many dogs, over 5,000 vying for best in show. So let's take a look back at some of the dogs that have come through from night one, starting in the non-sporting group. It's Princeton. The French Bulldog. Yep, Princeton won the group here last year, so he's going to try and do one better and win best in show. Amongst the hounds, it's Whiskey the Whippet. Whiskey the Whippet is the number one hound in America. Easily won the toy group last, last the working group, sorry, the hound group last night. Here's the toy group. It's yep, Biggie. Sorry. <laughs> Biggie the Pug. Well, Biggie's looking to become the first toy dog to ever win best in show at the national championship. And this is Kevin, the Weimaraner from the sporting group. Beautiful dog. He's going to give all the other dogs a run for their money tonight. All right, so here's a look at where we've come and where we're going. Four groups down, three to go tonight. The working group, the herding group, the terrier group, and then we'll bring all the group winners together to award one best in show at the end of the night. But we're going to start with the working group. So what kind of stuff are we going to look forward to from the working group? So this is the powerhouse of the dog world. They're big, they're bold, they're beautiful. There's 30 of them, so we should get started. <laughs> <laughs> not just yet, though, not before we welcome in the third member of our broadcast team and say hello to Sam Ryan. Uh, hello to you here in the Tropiclean Ready Ring, the final stop before the dogs and their handlers enter the ring for the competition. I'm here with Doc. What's up, Doc? Doc is ready to go, along with the working group, the first of the three groups that we will see tonight. Now, the winner of each group receives a Tropiclean clean gift basket complete with grooming products and then it is on to best in show doc is a leaner here right doc <laughs> so they are ready to go the working group to begin things and right now we are ready to begin we send it over to our pa announcer kevin skinner ladies and gentlemen good evening the american kennel club and royal canaan proudly present the 2018 akc national championship all breed dog show It's time for the working group. Our steward for the working group is AKC board member, Miss Rita Biddle. And please welcome from West Hartford, Connecticut, our judge, Dr. Anthony DiNardo. Thank you. May we have the working group, please. So it should be noted that Dr. Anthony DiNardo is the proud papa of Gina DiNardo. Yes, he is. That's how I got in the sport. It started as a young girl. He raised all of us with the dog world sport, and we love it. And how does the, how does the working group fit into to your history with dogs? So we started with breeding Great Danes, and then we moved to Dobermans, and we've had some boxers. So we're pretty much big fans of the working <laughs> group at our house. Pretty well versed yep. in the working group. As you're saying, there's 30 dogs in this group, so it's going to take a while for them all to get in here. They're big and beautiful. 
and each one of them can get the job done. This is the working group. Tell us a little bit more about what we're going to see. Well, they're bred to perform jobs such as guarding property, pulling sleds, performing water rescues. They're invaluable to humanity throughout the ages. They help in law enforcement, served in armed forces, and guard against intruders. Great Dane. There is no known reason for associating Great Danes with Denmark. The breed developed in Germany over 400 years ago, probably from breeds of Tibet, England, and elsewhere. Germans used the dog to hunt the savage wild boar. The Great Dane must be of commanding size Down and substance back. and be of even temper and deportment. This is Great Dane number 27. What's the most surprising thing about a Great Dane? You've owned Great Danes how gentle they are. They are really gentle giants. They're naturally very protective of their families, but they're cuddly. They love to lean on you, crawl into bed with you. This is Doc. And around, please. From Toledo, Ohio. He's got four all-breed best in shows just in 2018, does yep. Doc. He's a Harlequin Great Dane. That's the pattern that you see there. Beautiful. Alaskan Malamute. The earliest Russian sailors to arrive in the Arctic lands that became known as Alaska reported that the native people used dogs to pull sleds through the snow. The origin of these dogs, later known as Alaskan Malamutes, is unknown. Bred for strength and stamina, they are still at home in the harshest of climates and the roughest of conditions. This is Alaskan Malamute number 27. I think a lot of people get the Malamute and the Siberian Husky mixed up. What's the difference? Malamutes are much larger, much heavier bone. They're built to pull large, heavy loads, long distances. Siberians, around, smaller boned, thinner, lighter, faster. These guys are great, playful dogs, have great personalities. This is Harry from Bloomington, Indiana. Doberman Pinscher. This breed was developed in Germany in the late 19th century by a tax collector named Louis Doberman, who wanted a medium-sized guard dog as well as a companion. Their compact, elegant, muscular bodies and alert, intelligent demeanor make them ideal for many types of work, as well as a true friend and guardian. This is Down Doberman Pinscher, number seven. And this is Luigi. I've seen Dobermans with the ears that go straight up and some that don't. Yep, so straight up that's called cropped, and most dogs, Dobermans in the show world, are shown in with uh, cropped ears. This is the breed I grew up with. I've shown them since I was a little girl. They're wonderful, easily trainable, very intuitive and smart. Around, please. They make great pets. They're protective of their families. Great with kids. They're strong, so they need to be trained, but they're wonderful dogs. Luigi's from Beverly Hills, Florida. Florida. Boxer. The boxer was developed in Germany to hunt boar, bear, and bison. A medium-sized square dog, agile and able to reach great speed. The boxer is a happy, playful dog that loves their family and especially children. Boxers are intelligent and have minds of their own and are excellent problem solvers. This is boxer number 12. See that beautiful Turn chiseled back. head of the boxer. They're so well known for that. This is Wilma from Texas. Wilma's had a very successful show career this year. She's got 57 best in shows, 148 group firsts. She is the number one working dog in America right now and the number three all breed dog. Great family pets. They're so loyal, so devoted, so fun. The owner first bought their first dox, uh, boxer in 1976. Wow. Akita. The Akita evolved in the rugged, snowy mountains of Japan in the early 17th century and were used to go after wild boars and bear. At one time, ownership of this breed was limited to the imperial family. A special vocabulary was used to talk about or address this regal breed, and the Japanese still regard the Akita that. as a national treasure. This is Akita number nine. 
we have Fred from Houston, Texas. His owner says he likes to dance. I'd like to see Fred dance. Mm. This is an independent well, breed, but they're loyal. Can be a little bit headstrong. Yeah, when you say independent, does that mean they just do their own thing? Or? Well, they think on their own, and sometimes they do what they want. Even if you, you know, when you ask <laughs> them to do something, they do something else. Giant Schnauzer. The Giant Schnauzer was developed from the earlier standard Schnauzer and evolved as a result of the need for a larger breed to drive cattle rather than sheep. Bavarian cattlemen bred the smaller version to shepherd breeds and later to Great Danes. Gaining attention in the early 1900s, their nature and size made them a popular choice for police work. This is Giant Schnauzer number five. This is Jake from Sarasota, Florida. This is one of the few working breeds that has a wiry terrier-like coat, so it doesn't shed. They are highly intelligent. They're active. If you like to run or hike, this would be a breed for you. And that's what we call a please. perfect free stack there. <laughs> what, t tell, me, tell me what that is then, because I've never heard of Four square, alert, poised, frozen show themselves off to their best possible way. Rottweiler. As they conquered Europe, Roman armies brought food supplies with them in the form of herds. They were guarded and driven by dogs that were the ancestors of the Rottweiler. When the Romans were ousted, the dogs remained in what is now southern Germany. Over time, the breed developed and was used more often in police work than they were as drovers. This is Rottweiler number 69. Down the back. This is Mickey, the Rottweiler. He's the 2018 National Specialty winner. This breed is also bold, brave, intelligent, great for obedience, loves their families, strong. <laughs> Round, please. Black Russian Terrier. In the 1930s, a Russian military kennel began interbreeding Rottweilers, Giant Schnauzers, Airedales, and Newfoundlands to create a large, powerful guard dog that would be reliable, trainable, and able to endure harsh Russian winters. First bred true in 1956, the Black Russian Terrier is expected to be well-balanced with good temperament. This is Black Russian Terrier number six. And this is Boots. Boots is the daughter of the only Platinum Grand Champion Black Russian Terrier. She's the number one female, all systems. This is a breed that is intelligent, highly trainable, very strong guardian instincts. Not necessarily for a first time dog owner, but they're wonderful Around with the please. right training. Very strong. A lot of dog right there. Portuguese water dog. Portuguese water dogs probably descended from the herding dogs of Central Asia. Their route to the rugged coast of Portugal is open to debate, but their use is not. Fishermen of the area use them to herd fish into their nets and to retrieve lost tackle. Today, the breed maintains its love of water, coupled with tireless activity. This is Portuguese water dog number 10. And this is Gracie from Alexandria, Virginia. She is the granddaughter of the number one all-time Portuguese water dog who went best in show here in 2013, wow. Matisse. So there's the bloodlines continuing. What's with the grooming, uh, the shaving of the, the hindquarters? So they work in the water and it's the they shave it to make it easier for them to swim. It's also, they can be shown in two different clips. And a line. They have a line clip also, uh, this, this side, they just shave the hindquarters on this clip. Samoyed. The Samoyed is one of the oldest of all breeds and developed in the icy tundra of Antarctica. 
The predecessors of the Nordic breeds, they were used as guardians of reindeer and as sled dogs by native tribes. Samoyeds were the breed used in the 1911 expedition that was the first to reach the South Pole. This is Samoyed number 16. Some dogs have that natural smile. Mm -hmm. Samoya is one of them. That's right. The Sammy smile, they call it. Look at those sparkling. Oh, wow. They do got such good. <laughs> That's I didn't great. Know, yeah. Sparkling eyes. When they look, I mean, lips go back, it looks like they're me. smiling. They're very sweet. Tons of energy. This dog needs an activity every day to be happy. This is Kierda, number one Sammy. Kierda likes playing in the snow. Kierda yeah. can play hide and seek yeah. in the snow pretty easily. It's one of the oldest Arctic breeds, and they Around love the cold. And they have a coat to keep them warm. Very nice. Siberian Husky. Native to Northeastern Asia, the Siberian Husky was created to travel great distances at a moderate speed in low temperatures and with a minimum expenditure of energy. They were essential to the survival of the indigenous people. As these dogs gained popularity in Alaska, many stories of their stamina and strength became part of Alaskan history. This is Siberian Husky number five. This is a breed that's bred to go very long distances. They should be quick and light on their feet. Effortless gait, you see right there. This is Nick. He is the number three working dog. He has 30 best in shows. Comes from China. He's one of our international competitors. He's been shown here in the United States all year, but he, he was originally from China. You mentioned stamina, these high energy dogs as well. Yes, they need activity all day long. All these dogs need exercise to be happy, but the sled dogs especially so. Great Pyrenees. The Great Pyrenees likely developed from several ancient breeds from around the world. Once in Europe, the breed remained in isolated mountain pastures until medi medieval times. It was in the rugged mountain slopes of the Pyrenees that the breed was developed by French shepherds to guard the sheep. A unique feature of the breed is the presence of the double dew claws on the inside of the rear legs. This is Great Pyrenees, number 23. And this is Peyton. Peyton has 25 best in shows to his name. Wow, he's the number one Great Pyrenees. These are very gentle, wonderful dogs. They do have a shedding double coat. They are kind of independent. They bred to think without direction because they worked in the field guarding flock, so they were supposed to be able to be independent. Around, please. They have a good long lifespan for a giant breed, like 10 to 12 years. Bernese Mountain Dog. The Bernese Mountain Dog is from Switzerland and is the descendant of dogs brought to the area by invading Roman soldiers more than 2,000 years ago. They were willing workers on farms, performing draft and shepherding duties, also right. acting as watchdogs. Known as hard workers and loyal companions, the breed flourishes in its homeland. This is Bernese Mountain Dog, number 41. Such distinctive markings Down on there. the Bernese Mountain Dog. Yep. You'll see three Swiss breeds in this group, and they all have similar markings. The Bernese has the most coat of the three. This is Damon, the number two Bernese Mountain Dog. It's a very large draft dog. They should have a nice, slow trot. But they're very agile Around, also. Please. They love their families. You see a lot of these just in neighborhoods family dog. We've got one that goes to the dog park that I yep. take my dogs to all yep, the time. They're very popular and for good reason. They're lovable. Newfoundland. Their ancestry somewhat uncertain. The Newfoundland, Newfoundland originated in northeastern Canada and was the result of crossbreeding involving breeds that arrived with oh, European yeah. fishermen. Fun, with their heavy yeah, yeah. oily coat and their webbed feet, they are equally at home in icy waters as they are on land. Rescue stories abound involving the Newfoundland. This Newfoundland is number 11. Down back. And this is Xander, the Newfoundland. Yep, he comes up, came all the way across the country from California. 
He's the number one Newfoundland for the last two years. Another very sweet breed. You have to be able to tolerate the drool, though. They have a very wet mouth. But they're loyal, sweet-natured. They're famous for Around pulling please. people from icy waters. Is there a function for the wet mouth? Or is that just... A it's, there's not a function for it. It's just part of their... their their makeup. Yep, their yeah. makeup, exactly. Kuvas. With origins in Tibet, the Kuvas came to Hungary via Turkey. They were companions of those favored in royal circles eight centuries ago. Held in esteem as guardians, they were the constant companions of the rulers of the turbulent governments. While not as large as their early progenitors, Kuvas still have an intimidating presence. This is Kuvaz number six. It's Monet. A Kuvaz, which is a dog that I was not familiar with mm -hmm. before this. It looks like an amalgamation of a bunch of dogs Sounds that right. I'm familiar with, but not all that look like this. So they're white. They blended in with the sheep that they were bred to guard. They're very strong livestock guardians. They're fearless. Can be a little tough. This is the number one Kuvas bitch of all time, shown by her owner, Caroline Clegg, who is 17. She's a second generation dog handler. Around, please. Love that beautiful white coat and those dark, sparkling eyes. It's a gorgeous and dog. Beautiful. Bull Mastiff. The known history of the Bull Mastiff begins around 1860 in England. Gamekeepers on large estates needed a breed that was courageous, intelligent, and fast in order to deter poachers. They crossed the Mastiff and the Bulldog and came up with exactly what they wanted. The breed maintains its impressive qualities today and remains an eager guardian. This is Bull Mastiff number five. Down the mic. Sambuca, the bull mastiff. <laughs> and you can see that cross between the mastiff and, and the bulldog, can. for sure. They're a strong, courageous, fearless breed. Lovely family pet. His best friend and is a miniature long-haired dachshund. Yeah, I, can get, I get it. They're, they're wonderful. They're gentle. They'll protect you, but they know the difference between who they're protecting and their family. Sambuca's the number one bull mastiff in America. Greater Swiss Mountain Dog. Originating from the same ancient Roman breeds as the Bernese Mountain Dog, the Greater Swiss Mountain Dog actually predates all of the four related Swiss breeds and actually is the largest adaptable by nature. They were used as herding, guard, and cart dogs. They have a short coat, but it is very thick with a heavy undercoat. This is Greater Swiss Mountain Dog, number 17. So we're talking about the Swiss breeds. This is the second Swiss breed in the working group, and you see that same tricolor pattern in their coat. This is Fido, a national specialty winner. He's won best of breed at the AKC National Championship three times Around now. Him. So he's very used to this big ring. <coughs> Borble. The Borble is a large dog that is strong, confident, and muscular, with a distinctive blocky head. Despite its size, it is the most agile of the Mastiff-type breeds. The Borble, which means farm dog, serves as a working dog and is a loyal companion. Its coat is short, dense, and can be brindle, brown, cream, reddish-brown, or tawny. This is Borble number five. Down and back. And this is Oblio who has the kind of personality that you would see in, in a therapy dog, according to its owner. Well, they're supposed to be gentle and tolerant, and they're bred to be smart and guarding their families. I could believe that. Yeah, it's got a special connection with children, apparently. Aww. So this breed was newly recognized in 2015, so four years ago. 
and Oblio has and won Best of Breed here all four of those years. Wow. So this is the only Borble who's ever been in the National Championship group. He is the patriarch yep. of Borbles. That's right. Leonberger. Though lion-like in looks and size, the Leonberger is actually a calm, non-aggressive breed. Light on his feet and graceful in motion, the Leonberger was bred as a family, farm, and draft dog that now excels as a multi-purpose working dog and a reliable family companion. They can be red, reddish-brown, sandy, or yellow-brown, yet always have a black mask. This is Leonberger number five. Down the back, please. Yeah, this is the looks can be deceiving type of Because breed, they're right? so big and strong. Yes, they're so calm, good natured, great with kids. They love to be out and about. It's like to hike, backpack, swim, run. Check out that tail. It, it's swirly. It curls up over their back a little bit when they move. Mufasa is a greeter in the medical office where his owners work. And around. He comes from Slovakia. He came all the way from Slovakia. His owners have only been in the sport for three years. They were looking for a fun activity to do with their dog, and here they are. Commodore. Undoubtedly related to ancient breeds of the Russian steppes, the Commodore has been known in Hungary for 10 centuries. This breed was primarily a guardian of the flock. Their heavy white coat made them invisible while within the flock, but visible at night when watching from a distance. They must have a corded coat by two years of age. This is Commodore number six. Okay, I have so many questions okay, go. about Betty Boop. <laughs> go ahead. How do you keep that clean? It's very difficult because <laughs> it takes so long for that coat to dry that when you do wash it, it takes hours and hours to make sure it's thoroughly dry. Uh, it cords naturally, and it's there to protect them, the dog from the elements and from bites when it was working Around out in the field. Please. How long does it take for that <coughs> coat to grow to such a length? By one or two years, it should be pretty much looking like that. It gets, I've seen longer where they grow all the way down to the ground. All right, and the last question is, how do they see? Oh, it moves away, f the hair moves <laughs> from their eyes when they move. They can see. Anatolian Shepherd Dog. Probably more than 6,000 years old, the Anatolian Shepherd Dog is a native of Turkey and was used at the Shepherd's frontline defense from predators. Loyalty, independence, and hardiness are the hallmarks of the breed. Their independence and intelligence are tremendous assets in guard work. This is Anatolian Shepherd Dog number 10. This is Pumpkin. This is one of the most independent dogs I've ever seen. They work out in the field. They can be unfriendly with strangers. When they are working, they're super serious and they're amazing. I know people who have them to protect their chickens, their sheep. And around it's please. a real working dog still. And this is Pumpkin, who won the 2018 National Specialty, and this is the number one Anatolian, all systems. And Pumpkin's best buddy is a French Bulldog. Aw. Tibetan Mastiff. Considered by many to the be the basic stock from which most modern large working breeds have developed, the Tibetan Mastiff has been used primarily as a family and a property guardian for many thousands of years. He is aloof, watchful of strangers, and highly protective of its people and property. An intelligent breed, he is extremely independent and strong-willed. This is Tibetan Mastiff number 12. This is Gemma. Such a beautiful breed. They're very naturally protective. They may not let don't visitors into your house necessarily. <laughs> they don't require a lot of exercise. One of the working breeds that's more of a, a quiet guardian. They have this water repellent double coat. And it blows once a year, you'll have <laughs> fur all over your house, but if you, <laughs> you have to be able to tolerate that. Such cool markings on mm, top. Beautiful, right? Yeah. Very distinctive. Gemma won the 2017 National Specialty, was the number one Tibetan Mastiff last year. Mastiff, 
The Mastiff was known in the British Isles when Julius Caesar invaded in 55 BC. The breed fought beside their masters to fend off the Roman legions. Noted for their courage and strength, they were later marched or matched against bulls, bears, lions, and human gladiators. Over the centuries, Mastiffs have continued to prove their worth as loyal guardians. This is Mastiff number 21. This is Riker from Florida. He likes pasta, pasta. with butter. He snores very loudly. <laughs> and who's going to tell him to stop? And around. Very dignified breed. Should be confident. Have a good little attitude there. Very nice. Standard Schnauzer. The standard Schnauzer is the prototype for all three Schnauzers. Depicted in German paintings of the 15th century, the breed was originally called the wire-haired pincher. They were the guardians of the farm and its produce, and were later used as army and police dogs. This is standard Schnauzer number 33. Distinctive furnishings on the beard and over the eyebrows. Mm -hmm. Very distinctive for the Schnauzer. Very very well proportioned dog. Yep. Should be a nice square cobby dog. This is Bolt, by the way. I wonder why we don't see more Schnauzers as you know police dogs in They're the state. They're highly intelligent, yeah. uh, and they have that nice waterproof wiry coat. It's a coat that doesn't shed. You have to brush it, but it has hair, not fur, so it grows constantly. Similar Around to a lot of the wiry terrier coats you'll see coming up in the terrier group. Loves treeing squirrels at home, his owner says. <laughs> Dog de Bordeaux. The Dog de Bordeaux is one of France's most ancient breeds. He is a powerful dog with a very muscular body. With his massive head, serious expression, stocky and athletic build, he is quite an imposing animal. He has great courage, self-assurance, and is an affectionate companion to his master. This is Dog de Bordeaux. Number 19. Down the back. Yes. Obi likes long walks on the beach. Wait a second. No, that's true. Obi likes long <laughs> walks on the beach. I thought I was reading a different <laughs> uh, bio there. Well. And sharing Slurpees, which are great after a long walk on the beach. <laughs> that's right. This is a French Mastiff guard dog. Has that great, big, beautiful head. It should be have a scowling expression. Around, please. That head is intentionally supposed to intimidate people. St. Bernard. The St. Bernard is another breed whose ancestry goes back to the Romans. They are descended from the Mastiff type dogs the Romans bred to local dogs of the Swiss Alps. Originally, saints were short haired, but later developed into both the smooth and the long haired. Swiss monks, the rescuers of travelers, were dependent upon the breed. This is St. Bernard number 11. This is Baby Aristo. He's won best of breed here three years in a row. Another powerful, strong, tall breed. See that big head. Another dog with a wet mouth, right? Yep, they're Around drooling. Them. Most people who have them in the show ring have a drool towel, we call it, that they stick in their pocket. Neapolitan Mastiff. This ancient breed regained popularity in Italy in the 1940s. They are heavily boned, massive dogs, and they were bred as use as a defender of owner and property. Neapolitan Mastiffs are characterized by loose skin over their entire body with abundant wrinkles and folds on their head and a voluminous dewlap. This is Neapolitan Mastiff number five. 
get a load of Maximus. Aren't they awesome? Amazing. Is Massive there, appearance. Is there a function for the loose skin? Yes, when they were in fight, when they were fighting, uh, they would, the loose skin would protect them from injury. I think their heads They're are simply loose. astonishing. <coughs> All the, the wrinkles and the dewlaps. Oh absolutely yeah. amazing. It's stop traffic so astonishing. So unique, yep. Yeah. An ancient breed, it's amazing. German pincher. The German pincher dates back centuries when it was used as a ratter and kept as a house and farm dog. The breed's natural hunting skills give it a keen sense of prey, drive, and determination. German pinchers are of medium size, short-coated, and highly intelligent, with an animated expression that conveys the impression of a tireless working dog. This is German pincher number five. This is very intelligent dog. They get bored easily. You need to entertain them with exercise and games, training. Can be a bit sharp with people who they don't know. Dirk looks like he wants something to do constantly. Absolutely. Lots of energy. Round, please. Dirk is from Alabama. So now, my dad, yeah, Dr. Donato, is going to yeah. walk the line. <laughs> He's going to make a short list. He always makes a short list every time I watch him, so we're going to go out on a limb. So He's going to make a short <laughs> list. I think you would be the one <laughs> to yeah. know that, yeah. That's what I'm going to guess. I think he has his idea of who he's going to pull out. Malamute. Boxer. Sammy. Siberian. Pulled out the Newfoundland and the Great Pyrenees also. And the Kuvas. Schnauzer. And the standard Schnauzer. St. Bernard. And the St. Bernard. And that'll do it Got for now. Got nine dogs in the lineup. <laughs> Got more work to do with the working group. That's right. That's a nice lineup right there. Beautiful dogs. Only at events like the national championships can you see such depth of quality. You see beautiful dogs in every breed. It's a gorgeous lineup of dogs. They've had to defeat a Hundreds lot of dogs, of dogs to, get to get here. That's yeah. right. It's quiet in here. It's getting super exciting. It is. <laughs> It gonna be? Is he still thinking? Yeah. It? Well, he's gonna move him at the end, I bet. But he's he's trying to figure out between one two. You know, he's he's trying to figure out who he's gonna compare. Right? He'll decide on the go around. So all around this group, one time. Oh, all around together. This is cool. Big dogs moving fast. I love it. Yeah. And this is different than we saw in night one, where it was one at a time. Yeah. You can compare them well when you move them together. Your dad's got his own system, too. Yep. Every judge has their own system. OK. 
Okay. You can't go wrong. You could actually probably pick anywhere and be well okay. And he's going to count backwards from four to one. Okay, got to get your ribbons. Here we go. Now our judge, Dr. DiNardo, will select fourth through first place. We begin with fourth place. <coughs> Very nice group. Fourth place. St. Bernard. Congrats. Third place, Siberian. Thank you. Oh, wait, let me have my ribbon first. Okay, go ahead. And we're good. Now, she, she, didn't, she didn't get her bowl. We didn't pass the Siberian the bowl. <laughs> now we'll do third place. Second place. Second place, boxer. Wilma, the boxer, second place. You're welcome. <laughs> Winner of the group is a Sammy. There you have it, Sam oh, yeah. Ed, winner of the working group, has earned a spot in Best in Show. That Sammy is smiling all the way to Best in Absolutely. Show. Absolutely. Dr. DiNardo has chosen group first, the Samoyed, second, the Boxer, third, the Siberian Husky, fourth, the St. Bernard. So here are the results from the working group. From four to one, the St. Bernard, Siberian Husky, the Boxer, and the Samoyed takes the working group and moves on to tonight's best in show. It was a beautiful lineup of dogs. Really cool to start the night off with such quality. Very difficult decision yeah. for Dr. DiNardo. Congratulations to Kierda, the number one Sammy, shown by Andrew Green. Sam Ryan is in the ring with the winner. Yes, with Andrew and Quarita. And this is for you. <laughs> this goes to you. Hello, Quarita. Congratulations. Can you tell me what you, <laughs> what makes her stand out to you? Well, what makes her stand out? She's beautiful on her legs. What she does for a living, herd reindeer, herds of reindeer. And she just, you could watch her go around. You, she could do that all day. She just, just floats around the ring. She's beautiful coated beautiful type. She just does it. She's a good show dog, which helps. But uh, she's very athletic. She's very good. At ease this evening and the first group to go tonight, what was the excitement level or anxiety like out there? Well, I wasn't actually overly anxious about it. But uh, now we just have to see what the judge likes. You show her as best you can. She hopes you, you put, you know, she puts on a show for you and she did it and he likes her. So it's good. Congratulations, Andrew. Thank you very much. And Corita, back to you guys. Thank you. Okay, Corita, the Samoyed <laughs> is into the best in show lineup. Now we've got four down. Make it five <laughs> after yep. the working group. That's right. We've got five out of the seven spots. We have five amazing dogs already. The French Bulldog in the non-sporting group, the Whippet and the Hound, Pug from the Toy, Weimaraner from Sporting, and now the Samoyed from the working group. Coming up next, we're gonna have the herding group. The herding group is getting ready to get into the ring. That's coming up after the break. But before we go to commercial, this is first breed tri trivia of the night. This is presented by WeatherTech. And this is the only breed native to Cuba, is it? The Chihuahua, Chow Chow, Havanese, 
Cholo? Cholo, yep. It's the Havanista. <laughs> <laughs> we'll be right back. The Herding Group is coming up. Is your pet trying to tell you something? The Pet Comfort Feeding System by WeatherTech. 100% non-toxic and lead-free. Made from U.S. stainless steel and certified by the NSF. Designed to trap spills and messes. Trust the way you feed your pet. Choose the perfect size and color at PetComfort.com. This is no ordinary puppy. And this is no ordinary story. This is the tale of a hero in the making. He is born, raised, and fed to make the impossible possible. Because he is no ordinary dog. He's a Yukonuba dog. Feed the extraordinary in your puppy and make your dog a Yukonuba dog. There are certain breeds that are gonna be great apartment dogs if you live in New York City. There's gonna be other breeds that are fabulous working dogs for you if you're out on a ranch. He is my best friend. AKC.org is the best place to start because they have all the information about any breed you can think of. What's not the love about this face? <laughs> This is a Labrador Retriever. This is a Golden Retriever. They may seem similar, but when you take a closer look, the details tell a different story. These dogs eat, digest, and process energy differently. At Royal Canin, we obsess over these details. So we developed over 200 specific formulas for cats and dogs, because precise nutrition can transform your pet into a magnificent animal. Royal Canin, incredible in every detail. The 2018 AKC National Championship Dog Show is brought to you by the American Kennel Club, home for all things dog. By Royal Canin, incredible in every detail. Yukonuba, that's a Yukonuba dog. By Tropiclean, you make the moments, we make them fresh. And by WeatherTech, pet comfort by WeatherTech. And welcome back to the 2018 AKC National Championship Dog Show presented by Royal Canin. And hey, if you're looking for dogs with athleticism, we'll look towards the agility ring. Over a million dogs a year enter the AKC agility contests, and it's easy to see why the discipline is so popular. Agility is a timed race course for the dogs, um, but they've got a partner. They've got to run it with their handlers. They become a team with their dog, and they need to complete the course accurately and as quickly as possible. The dogs and handlers have to be connected when they're running. When you watch that course, it's just as smooth as fast as can be. You just know they're absolutely in sync with each other. And a lot of that is nonverbal. The best teams are usually very, very quiet out there because the dogs tend to watch the handler's body language. Each course has its own challenges. We've got different styles of courses. We have a dog walk they have to go up and over that's four feet high. We've got an A-frame that's five foot, six inches high. It is 100% a race from one end to the other. to say this was one of my favorite things to do all week was to watch <laughs> these agility dogs go it is fantastic amazing. in fact some of the dogs you're about to see were taking part from the herding group now it's time for the herding group our steward for the herding group is akc vice chairman dr thomas davies please welcome from sapphire north carolina our judge Mrs. Dorothy N. Collier. <laughs> May we have the herding group, please.
lot of familiar faces in the herding group. There are some very popular, well-known breeds in this group, and then a few newcomers that other people, that people may not know about. 31 dogs in the herding group. Just keep coming, right? <laughs> <laughs> and here we go. The corgis bring Pulling up the up rear. The end. Yep. And here's what we can look for in the herding group. Well, herding dogs are bred to control the movement of other animals, such as sheep and cattle. Their main duty is to drive livestock from one place to another. Their instinct prompts them to gently herd humans, especially children. And tonight we have judging Mrs. Dorothy Collier. She's best known for her success with Commodores. She's judged best in shows around the world. She's licensed for both working and herding groups. German Shepherd Dog. The modern German Shepherd Dog was not recognized until the late 19th century, although their working ancestry dates back a great deal further. The breed has a faithful following throughout the world. They are versatile and enthusiastic workers and are used in police work, search and rescue, and as assistance dogs. This is German Shepherd Dog number six. Start off the night with very recognizable breed, the German Shepherd. So smart, so trainable, amazing family dogs, naturally protective. They shed about twice a year. Thank you for right around. This is Bella. <laughs> bearded Collie. One of Britain's oldest breeds, the Bearded Collie probably shares some ancestors with the shaggy breeds of Central Europe. Because they were the dogs of the common shepherds of South Scotland rather than of nobility, records of the breeds are scarce prior to the 18th century. They are excellent shepherds and drovers. This is Bearded Collie number seven. This is Bean. His registered name is Highlander MacBean at Burlesque. He is from <laughs> Virginia. Has a versatility title. He's Great a veteran, time. which means he's over seven. Exactly, he turned nine years old this year, and he won best of breed today from the veterans class. It's fascinating that you have dogs that are just out of puppy stage, and now you have veterans nine years old. Absolutely. Love to see the veterans win. It's a very exuberant breed. Thank you. Go right around. Have a natural part down the middle of their back. And did you naturally keep the hair that long? Yes, well, this is a show coat, but yeah, yeah. You, if you brush it, it, it'll stay like that. It takes a lot of brushing, though, it tangles. Australian Shepherd. Despite their name, Australian Shepherds were developed almost exclusively in the United States in the 1800s. While their origins are not certain, their ancestors may have been developed by Basque Shepherds who settled in Australia before coming to the United States during the gold rush of 1849. These versatile dogs are used not only on the ranch, but also as drug detectors, search and rescue dogs, and guide dogs. This is Australian Shepherd number 117. This is Tango from Washington State. Number one Australian Shepherd. This is a very delightful high energy breed. They love to be part of the daily hustle and bustle. They want to go with you in the car. They just want to go everywhere with you. These dogs were my first experience being around a dog for an extended period of time. When and I your dog thoughts sat for a week, were? loved it. So much loved. energy oh, though, right? Yeah, but I was young. I had energy then. There you go. <laughs> well, they're very intelligent, so they need uh, intellectual stimulation and physical exercise. Lots of games and training would make this dog very happy. It makes me nostalgic seeing Aww, that dog. Very beautiful breed. Yeah.
Belgian Turveren. There are three Belgian Shepherd dogs in this group. All three were recognized in 1891 as a result of the efforts of the newly formed Belgian Shepherd Club. The Belgian Turveren is distinguished by being long-haired and not black. Typically, they are fond of mahogany with black overlay. This is Belgian Turveren number five. And this is Rev, and according to Rev's owner, Rev is very naughty. <laughs> How so? <laughs> <laughs> He's constantly taking things and then wants his owner to chase him. Well, they're smart and That's they right. want to play. They need to have uh, activity. Um, they're beautiful. There's, seven, There's th three of them in the group tonight, three Belgian breeds. This one gets its name from the village to Vern, where it came from. They make excellent therapy dogs, guide dogs. They always have this deep, rich, mahogany colored coat. That is a gorgeous dog. Mm -hmm. Russ Thaler and Gina DiNardo with the AKC. Thank you for that round. And of course, this is the AKC <laughs> National Championship Dog Show. We're in the herding group. Working our way towards best in show. That's right, this is the sixth of seven groups. Belgian Sheepdog. The Belgian Sheepdog is the long-haired black one of the three Belgian Shepherd dogs. All of the three Belgian Shepherds probably developed from the same European herding stock as did other similar breeds throughout the surrounding countries. This is Belgian Sheepdog number five. This is Thunder. Thunder's dad won the same award five years ago. Same owner. Very good. There's fast, protective, high energy. They make excellent search and rescue dogs. If you like to do got tracking therapy, a dog that would be very successful in that. During the war wars, they carried messages, pulled ambulance wagons. Wow. Guarded military sites. They're amazing. Talk about versatile. Yes. <laughs> Belgian Malinois. The Belgian Malinois is the short coated dog with the black mask and black ears. These three Belgian breeds are all excel in herding and obedience work. They are also used as police dogs and drug and bomb detection dogs. This is Belgian Malinois number 12. I feel like this is a Belgian version of the German Shepherd. Because similar, well, like similar markings, yeah. similar, you know, the head is, I could see where you'd see it's similar, the dark mask, the prick ears, more and narrow, Used in police breed. work a lot. Absol yep, right? absolutely. I keep Down saying it over and again, but these breeds need lots of exercise and mental stimulation to be happy. Mm -hmm. They're they're super smart. All of these breeds are built to be outside working all day long. So they need exercise. This is Lucy from Connecticut. She's a grand champion with over 50 best of breeds. Loves to play Frisbee. That's another great way to get some exercise for your dog. Thank you, Gordon. You know who's a big fan of these dogs? Mm -mm. Martina Navratilova. Is that true? Yeah. Oh, I like her more than I already <laughs> did. Bouvier de Flanders. In the 19th century in Southwest <laughs> Flanders and the French Northern Plains, the farmers, butchers, and cattle merchants use large, rough-coated dogs for driving cattle. An amalgamation of these dogs eventually became the Bouvier de Flandre of today. These dogs are powerful and rugged, but agile. They are frequently used as guardians. This is Bouvier de Flandre, number 15. Willie. Willie is also an agility dog and a scent work dog. Scent work is one of AKC's newest sports. Super fun. All breeds can do it. It's what dogs 
use their nose to f do almost anything and everything. So it's a sport that any dog can excel in. Would size be a hindrance in the agility? A dog of this size would, you know? Well, for the super fastest, fastest right. dogs, yeah. yes, because the, you see the, the papillons doing yeah, it. Yeah, uh, but they're agile and they're quick and they love to do it and they're smart. But like the That's best agility cool. dogs you see, and we'll see them here, are like the border collies and the Australian shepherds in this group. It's a powerful, compact dog. Briard. French tapestries of the 8th century depict the Briard. This ancient breed of France was used to defend flocks from wolves and poachers, and in later years to herd the flock and guard property. During war times, they had served as sentries, guarded supplies, and located wounded soldiers. They are versatile and quick learners. This is Briard number 15. Chic, whose registered name is Majestique, just my style. <laughs> from Hillsboro, North Carolina. This is a beautiful long double coat. Requires lots of brushing. They're a fearless breed. They're excellent watchdogs. Like most sheep dogs, they could be naturally wary of strangers. Thank you for murdering. One of the owners of this dog is Jeffrey Deaver, yes. who wrote the movie, The Bone Collector. That's right. Beauceron. The Beauceron is an old and distinct French breed of herding dog, developed solely in France. Beaucerons were used to move herds of 200 to 300 sheep from field to field and protect them from predators. Later, these dogs were used in the military and by the police. He is an intelligent dog with spirit and initiative, wise and fearless with no trace of timidity. This is Beauceron number 18. Yeah. I wonder why some herding dogs look like the herds that they're going to be, you know, moving around. And some, like this one, the Beauceron, doesn't look like a sheep at all. <laughs> <laughs> well, they were also protective dogs. And uh, they so ha it also depends on where they came from. So this is a French dog, and the markings are similar to a few other French breeds that you'll see. It's an ancient breed. This is the number three Beauceron in the country. Won the national specialty in 2017. His owner says that he is raised in a household of whippets, and she is convinced that she is a big, black, hairy whippet. <laughs> of course. <laughs> Thank you for that. She says that they, she likes to herd them. She thinks that they're her little sheep. <laughs> so cute. This breed could travel up to 50 miles a day, herding 200, 300 sheep. They're amazing. Rough Collie. The early herding dogs of Scotland and England were the predecessors of the Collie. It was only in the early 19th century that notice was taken of this breed and their type became consistent. Collies are recognized today in two varieties, the Rough Collie, as seen here, and the Smooth Collie. This is Rough Collie, number 35. First of three Collies, we'll see. This is Fiero. A rough collie. Every morning he unloads a toy box while his owner drinks coffee and brings the toys to him for them to play catch. I gotta say though, the, it, the, it's not like the coat looks particularly rough. Well, yes, as opposed to smooth, right? So right. all that full hair, they mean rough. You'll see the smoother collie has a shorter close to the uh, skin coat. They're excellent wash do watchdogs. They're very clean. They're very smart. 
active breed, like all of these, all of them, active breeds here. I'm gonna pick any one, and they'll love to go running with you. <laughs> Otherwise, they wouldn't be in the herding That's group. right. Smooth Collie. Smooth Collies were first recorded as being much larger than the Rough Collie. However, as the popularity of the breed grew, the two varieties converged and are now judged by the same standard, with the exception of coat description. Popularized by fiction, movies, and television, the Collie is the best known of the herding breeds. This is Smooth Collie, number 27. Collie, this collie breed was primarily a drover's dog, so they're used for guiding the dogs and the sheep from mar to market as opposed to standing over them or guarding them in the pasture. Ah, okay. This is Bandit. Yeah, it's interesting that different breeds have, have sort of different functions. Absolutely. Each breed has a purpose and a function for which it's bred, and its structure is supposed to help it do that job to the best of its ability. Their coats help by protect them. They're str if they're uh, squared, they're usually very agile and fast. <laughs> Form follows function, we say in the dog world. Berger yep. Picard. Forgive me, the Border Collie. <laughs> the Border Collie. Well, there have been many sheepdogs of various sorts in the British Isles since the time of the Romans. Well, Most of these breeds were covered by the Scottish dialect word collie. The border collie gets its name from the border region between England and Scotland. They are known for their herding abilities as well as their obedience and trainability. This is border collie number 15. Familiar look for the border collie, but doesn't look at all like the rough or the smooth collie that we just saw before. No, no. In coloring, at least. That's right. This is a very active breed. It's a work workaholic of the dog world. High drive, highly trainable. If you love to do agility, this is one of the best agility breeds that there is. This is Slick, the top border collie in history of the breed, with 50 best in shows, two wow. national specialties. 100 group firsts. Beautiful, intensive I stare. That's part of the intensity of this breed. So, so high energy and focused. Could run all day long, this dog. Berger Picard. The Berger Picard is one of the oldest French herding breeds. Picardy is a medium-sized, active, athletic dog that was bred to be a working companion. This good-natured, loyal breed is solid, hardy, well-muscled, and well-built without ever being heavy. Its lively, alert expression is characterized by its rugged appearance. This is Berger Picard number five. Look at that shaggy coat. So cute. I can see that dog on my couch. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I look at that dog and I think that's... You like that? I mean, maybe that's your choice? I, I could be getting there. I could be getting there. They're athletic. This waterproof coat, it's rough all over. Requires some brushing to prevent matting, but it's not super hard to take care of. This is Gotham, number one Berger Picard in America for last year and this year. That's what we call four stack square. The beautiful, attentive look. Love that. Gotham was born in France. Canaan dog. Canaan dogs, the dogs of the Israelites, 
probably existed as early as 2200 BC. As the Romans dispersed the people of the region, the dogs became undomesticated and moved into the desert where they survived until the 20th century. As Israelis prepared to fight for independence, the breed was put to work guarding and detecting mines. This is Canaan Dog number five. And this is Avi, a name with a Hebrew origin for mm -hmm. the Israeli-based yep. National dog, dog of Israel. They're sweet, affectionate, very trainable. It's two straight years is the number one Canaan dog in America here. Yep, top 30 herding dog. So Avi recently found their neighbor's lost llama. <laughs> their owners had moved out into the country and they got a phone call from their neighbor saying, we lost our llama. Can you please bring Avi out and help us catch him? <laughs> and he, he did. did. He, did. <laughs> he found the llama. So he did what he was bred yep. to do. And then he calmly herded it back to home. That that's awesome. Amazing. Good job. Yes, and that's all instinctual. It's amazing. Old English Sheepdog. The origins of the Old English Sheepdog are open to debate, but the breed clearly comes from the early herding dogs of Western England. The breed can be traced to the early 19th century when it was used as a drover and was known as a bobtail. This is an active breed whose hard outer coat and soft undercoat provide an unmistakable look. This is Old English Sheepdog number 22. How, how big is Sophia here, really? Like, how much of it is she, dog and how much of it is coat? Is she has a lot of coat. coat on top of her. And in order to properly judge this breed, you really have to get your hands inside and mess up that coat and feel the shape. Right the head has a specific, well, all, in all breeds. But you, in order to tell in this breed, you got to feel everything because of all the coat. It's profuse, it's an effective insulator. This is a very sweet tempered breed. When they're trotting, the hair lifts right out of their eyes, you can see. The coat feels like cotton candy. Mm -hmm. I was petting one of these yeah, earlier Yeah, they're today. amazing. It's a Sophia, number three herding dog, 27 best in shows this year. There's a lot of dedication to having this breed with this coat because it requires a lot of brushing. The adult coat will pretty easily mat. Australian cattle dog. The Australian cattle dog came about in Australia in the 1800s to satisfy the need for a hard-working, quiet cattle drover that could withstand the heat. They are cross of smooth highland collies from Scotland, the native dingo, Dalmatians, and Kelpies. The result was a hard worker with a protective nature that is also a loyal companion for his master. This is Australian cattle dog number 22. This is Snapple from Huffman, Texas. And this just looks like a sturdy dog that can get the job done. You are absolutely right. They're bred to run all day. They're very devoted to their families. They're highly inquisitive, a strong herding instinct. They're lovable. I, I've, se I've seen kids, they're, they're great with kids. They're smart, they love to play with kids. Nice, compact, medium-sized dog. Not a lot of wasted space on that dog yeah. at all. Compact, love yeah. that. Yeah. Spanish water dog. The Spanish water dog is a medium-sized, curly-coated, multi-purpose farm dog whose primary function is that of a versatile herding dog. They have a distinctively curly coat with a woolly texture that may form cords when long. They are never brushed or sculpted. Spanish water dogs are very loyal and are best suited to owners with an active lifestyle. 
This is Spanish Water Dog, number 25. Desiato. It almost looks like the beginning stages of that corded coat. That's right. It's, a, it's distinctive, though. It, it's a curly, woolly, single coat. What's amazing about it is it does not have to be brushed. It doesn't mat. It just stays like that. They're excellent water retrievers. They love to swim. And they're excellent watchdogs. They were flock dogs, so they can become territorial, wary of strangers, because they're bred to protect the flock. This is number one Spanish water dog for 2018. Finnish Lapund. Finnish Lapund were bred to herd reindeer and as helpers to the Sami, a tribe in the northern regions of Finland, Sweden, and northern Russian known as Lapland. These double-coated dogs are intelligent, eager to learn, calm, and friendly with people. They make loving and devoted family pets that do well with children and other dogs. This is Finnish Lapund number 15. Now that I've heard this a few times, <laughs> I need to ask you what it really, oh. the double coated. Okay, so the outer coat is usually harder and harsher and water, more water resistant. Yeah. And the inner coat is more soft and woolly and that helps insulate from the cold. So you'll see a lot of the Arctic breeds will have this double coat. The, out, the undercoat sheds mm -hmm. seasonally. The undercoat the sheds. The undercoat. But not the outer coat. Not as much. Okay. And that allows them to be good in cold and in water. That's right. Or cold water. Correct. Depending on the breed. They should have a luscious, profuse coat, which this one does. It's a very good-natured, friendly breed. Thank you for having them. They should have a profuse, coated tail, curves over their back, which you see right there. Those instantly recognizable Nordic features that we were talking That's about. That's right. Pointed ears, curled tail. We saw a lot of them on night one. Spitzy face, yep. Polish Lowland Sheepdog. There is evidence of the Polish Lowland Sheepdog in Poland in the 16th century. They probably came about as a cross between a Puli and another herding breed. They were used as, by peasants as guardians of flock and home. The Polish Lowland Sheepdog may also have played some role in the ancestry of the Bearded Collie. This is Pos Polish Lowland Sheepdog number 15. This is a breed that is sometimes called the pawn. Very high energy. They're born workers, thrive on exercise and activity. They've been used to, as guard dogs. They have a double coat. I <laughs> and I will say they're very, say? they're very photogenic. And they're beautiful. They're very clever, very perceptive. They're known for having excellent memory. Sheep herder by day and a guard dog by night. Beautiful. Norwegian Buhund. Once the cherished companion of Vikings, the Norwegian Buhund is a versatile farm dog from Norway that herds livestock, guards property, and has been used for hunting game. The name means farm dog. Bu in Norwegian means homestead or farm, and hund means dog. This herding breed has a lot of energy, strength, and stamina, but is also known to be independent. This is Norwegian Buhund number five. This is Ragnar. Loves to run in the paddock at home with his friends, the Field Spaniels. 2018 National Specialty winner, the number one Buhound all breed. Is there, is there a functionality to the curled tail? We've seen a lot of them. Well, in the cold, they will curl up and they'll use the tail to cover their eyes and ears to keep them warm. Mm -hmm. This is a breed that was sent out alone to fetch the sheep, so they're very independent. Excellent at police work. Would be great at scent work. 
Icelandic Sheepdog. Playful and inquisitive, the Icelandic Sheepdog is a hardy and agile dog with prick ears and a curled tail. Slightly under medium size, the breed has two coat types, long and short. Iceland's only native dog is adapted to local terrain and farming techniques, making this herding dog indispensable to its people. This is like Icelandic Sheepdog number five. This is Roy, the Icelandic Sheepdog from Lexington, Massachusetts, which is right outside Boston. He's a bronze grand champion. He started agility just last week. Another Nordic Spitz breed. Shetland Sheepdog. Developed in the Shetland Islands, northeast of Scotland, the Shetland Sheepdog comes from the same herding stock as the Collie. Owners must be prepared to brush the double-coated Sheltie regularly. The Sheltie today is an active, athletic, healthy, intelligent breed, easy to train, and devoted to family members. This is Shetland Sheepdog number nine. Conrad, the Shetland Sheepdog. Conrad is from California, the number one Sheltie, top winning Sheltie in the past 20 years in a single year. His best friends are two, uh, two, uh, two twin, well, twins, four-year-old twins. It's a very intelligent breed. This is an excellent breed for obedience and agility can excel at almost anything, highly intelligent. Love that profuse coat, just gorgeous. Look at that face. It is a beautiful dog. Absolutely. Has a spunky attitude. Oh yeah. Yep. Enjoy yep. Conrad's enjoying being in the ring right, right now. That's the show, absolutely. And you know that's what the best show dogs, that's what they do. They just love it. Fans love Conrad too. Mm, gorgeous. Miniature American Shepherd. The miniature American Shepherd was developed in California during the late 1960s, and by the late 1990s attained nationwide popularity. Bred to maintain their small size, these active, intelligent dogs have been used for herding smaller stock, such as sheep and goats, although they have the heart to tackle larger stock as well. This eye-catchingly versatile dog is equal at home on a ranch or in the city. This is Miniature American Shepherd, number 71. I may have met this exact dog earlier today, because I spent some good time with a miniature American Shepherd, in fact, took a picture, and oh, I wow. think this is him. Well, I think this it's is Reno. Reno. He won best of breed here last year. He's number one miniature American Shepherd. This is a breed that l is intelligent. It wants to be exercised. Full coat needs to be brushed regularly, so it doesn't mat. They're exceptionally agile. They have strength and stamina. I think I wanted to take him home, to be fair. I mean, yeah. he is. He, Look at this guy. This is guy. the breed for you, perhaps. Perhaps. But there's more. There's, well, there is more <laughs> than one for everyone. Puli. The Puli is a Hungarian breed that probably resulted over 1,000 years ago from the interbreeding of herding breeds of Central Europe with sheepdogs of invading tribes from Asia. They were kept with the herd and were easy to distinguish from the sheep because of their dark color. The Pooley's coat can be kept brushed or allowed to cord. This is Pooley number nine. This is Parker, and the Pooley is another one of these corded, coated That's correct. dogs. <laughs> 
You don't hear that much. No, I mean, you barely what? ever hear dogs barking. Why, why is that? Why, well, why do we not usually hear dogs barking barks, in the rain? Because they're so used to the environment, and they're so nothing's phasing them here, so there's nothing to really bark at. He was That was a happy bark. They're exuberant with their family, can be reserved with strangers. They're excellent watchdogs. They have tough as nails herding ability. They're bred to perform herding duties across a whole bunch of terrains. Love that woolly corded coat. Pumi. Originating in Hungary, the Pumi is a medium-sized, agile dog that was bred to gather, drive, and control livestock. They are extremely intelligent, quick learners, and hardworking. Their wavy coat forms corkscrew curls that only require combing every two to three weeks and an occasional bath. Pumic make wonderful companions for a family willing to provide lots of exercise and mental stimulation. This is Pumi number seven. Look at that face, those <laughs> semi-erect ears, a hallmark of the breed. They have this very whimsical expression. First the Puli, now the Pumi, they look nothing alike. No, but they're both Hungarian breeds. They, they are, they're <laughs> both from Hungary, which is why their names probably mm -hmm. sound familiar, I would think. Yep. That's a natural smiler, too. They're the very cute. Yeah. They're brave and strong. Th their face, make their cuteness makes you think they may not be as tough as other herding breeds, but they really are. They're exceptionally good at their jobs. A nice medium-sized dog that craves exercise if you're looking for a running companion. Pyrenean Shepherd. The Pyrenean Shepherd is the traditional working companion of the larger dog, the Great Pyrenees. Together they aid the shepherd in his everyday workings with his herd of sheep or other livestock. Outside his homeland of France, the breed is rare, but in France his popularity as a devoted family companion has grown considerably since the early 1970s. Although small in stature and weight, it is said pound for pound, he has few equals in both herding or guarding. This is Pyrenean Shepherd number seven. This is Clipper, the 2018 National Specialty winner. And another fan favorite. Yes. This is a cool breed. It worked with Great Pyrenees. So the Great Pyrenees guarded the flocks against predators, and the Pyrenean Shepherd was used solely for herding, and they work side by side. They're small, quick-footed. Very intelligent. Thank you, Colette. They're known to bond very closely with one person, sometimes to exclusion of all others. Very alert, excellent watchdogs. <laughs> Entity Booker Mountain Dog. The Entley Booker Mountain Dog was bred to move cows from pasture to pasture in the Swiss Alps. This medium-sized breed is prized for its agreeable nature, trainability, and devotion. Entleys are an active, high-energy breed requiring above-average exercise, so are best suited to active families as opposed to the casual dog owner. This is Entley Booker Mountain Dog number 11. This is Neo from California, number one all breed. Won the national in 2018. Loves hiking in the mountains. Also likes freestyle dancing. <laughs> he has his trick dog performer title. Rides a skateboard. Wow. Has multiple dog dancing titles. This is the smallest of the four Swiss breeds. That's tricolor that we're seeing a few times tonight. This is apparently the dog that makes you feel like your dog is lazy because he <laughs> does right. everything. <laughs> they're small, they're quick. He rides muscular, a skateboard. <laughs> smart. Bergamasco. The Bergamasco traces its ancestry to ancient livestock guardian dogs of Persian. It is a rustic, athletic sheepdog covered with an abundant protective coat made of flat layers of felted hair. Muscular and solidly built, they are a courageous, protective, and somewhat independent breed. 
Their eager to please nature makes them enjoyable companions. This is Bergamasco number six. This is Fagia. The number one Bergamasco. This coat is an amazing thing to touch and feel. Those mats are called flocks. And it's really a combination of three different types of hair. The flocks can grow all the way down to the ground by the time the dogs are older. And it's a truly ancient breed. You can trace it back to over 7,000 years ago. <laughs> Underneath all those flocks, though, they're really not that big a dog. They have a you know, moderate-sized body. Very protective, naturally intelligent. What a distinctive-looking mm -hmm. dog. Fagia also does herding and works on her farm. Yeah. She does her job. Love that. And she gives hugs on demand, though. Aw. She asks her. She says she loves horses and loves being a farm dog. So when she's not being a beauty out here, she's doing work on the farm. Swedish Valhund. The Swedish Valhund, or SV, is a very old Spitz-type breed known since the time of the Vikings. For centuries, the SV has been kept as a farm dog and used for herding cattle. The SV is small, powerful, and sturdily built. The double coat and the characteristic harness markings are essential features of this breed. This is Swedish Valhund, number five. This is the aptly named Grayson. It's got that great coat. <laughs> that gray coat. This is an active, energetic breed, but they'll settle down for a little cuddle time. They love children. They have a nice, even temperament. Very energetic. Grayson loves to play frisbee and also loves the water. They're tra training him to duck dive right now. He looks like a happy little boy. Yes, he does. He's also the number one Swedish Valhund in the country. Pembroke Welsh Corgi. The Pembroke Welsh Corgi probably arrived in Wales along with Flemish immigrants in the 12th century. Their ancestry is closely related to that of the Spitz breeds of Northern Europe. Interbreeding with Cardigan Corgis did occur, but the two are separate breeds and haven't been interbred since the middle of the 19th century. This is Pembroke Welsh Corgi, number 40. And this is Etta, and I gotta say to my eye, I don't know if there is a cuter dog than a Corgi. You there might be as this cute. This is like your favorite breed. I'm smitten, I'm smitten with the Corgis. In fact, at first I thought it was just the Pembroke. We're about, we're gonna see the Cardigan next. I met the Cardigans today. So now you're in I, love with I, both? I'm in. I'm in. I'm in. <laughs> Look at that butt. I mean, so seriously. So cute, right? Yeah. That is just starting her specials career. She also likes to herd and does barn hunt, which is another AKC. What is barn hunt? So it's an instinct test where the animals are supposed to find rats that are hidden under bales of hay. It's purely instinctual. It's fun. Another natural smiler, the Corgis. Cardigan Welsh Corgi. The Cardigan Welsh Corgi is the older of the Corgi breeds. The breed has been known in the high country of Wales since 1200 BC. During latter centuries, when open common fields were shared by tenant farmers for grazing land, Cardigans earned their keep by driving the cattle out to cover as much of the grazing land as possible. This is Cardigan Welsh Corgi, number 34. So the Cardigan, clearly, this is Libby, by the way, clearly has the tail, which the Pembroke. Yep, the ears are more doesn't. rounded than the Pembroke's, and it has a long tail. There is also a little heavier boned, the Cardigan, than the Pembroke, a little longer in the body. I noticed that today when I was petting mm -hmm. the, the uh, Cardigan for the first time, that it was uh, like a bigger dog. It had a yep. heftier feel to it. Now, Libby has 33 best in shows. She is wow. the top winning Cardigan Corgi in the breed's history. <laughs> Says that she never leaves her owner's side, that she has her heart. 
This is Bri her owner, Sh Sherry Hurst, also showing her tonight. Thank you for that, Mom. Last year, she got a group four in the herding group at the national championship. What does that mean, group four? Fourth place. Oh, fourth place. Yeah. Oh, group, okay, there you go. And she's 10 years old, can you believe it? No, yeah. I mean, good look at that energy for a 10 year old dog. It's well, fantastic. that's a herding dog for you, so much energy. And now, 31 dogs in the herding group. It's a lot to handle a right now. A lot of work. Gotta cut it down. Our judge, Mrs. Collier. Every one of the judges has narrowed the field. Hasn't yes. gone straight to the well, to the four three two one. Especially in a group where every breed is represented, the full group, and the quality is so high, you need to have a starting point to weed out, right? So she's done her Except examination. Her. Now she's going to pull them out so she can focus more clearly on the few that she loves. So she's got the German Shepherd, the Bearded Collie, the Australian Border Shepherd, collie. Belgian Sheepdog. Border Collie. Border Collie. Picard. Berger Picard. Old English Sheepdog. Chelsea. Shetland Sheepdog. Cardigan. And the Cardigan Welsh Corgi. Pembroke was robbed. I'm <laughs> just kidding. <laughs> so we got nine dogs out there. <laughs> I'll let her know you thought no, so. I'm, I'm joking. <laughs> I'm <obviously>. kidding too. <laughs> <laughs> I'd like to see them go around one at a time, please, and come right back to the end. We'll start with the German Shepherd. That's the difference between judging and just being a dog lover. Dog lover. There you okay. go. Fair enough. There we go. The bearded collie. There's Bean. I work strictly on emotion. <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> well, which one gives you goosebumps? That's right. what I say. That's right. There's Tango, the Australian Shepherd. And there's Thunder, the Belgian Sheepdog. There's Border Collie. Slick. Gotham, the Berger Picard. There's Sophia, the old English sheepdog. There's a Shetland sheepdog. Crowd favorite here, I think. Yes. Last but not least, there's Libby, Cardigan, Welsh Corgi. So Dorothy Collier is the judge. the handlers are trying to make sure that their dog looks their absolute best right now. How do you catch the judge's eye? There is an intensity to this yes. night, too. <laughs> I know. It's because Best in Show is coming. That's, I think everyone knows <laughs> it. You can right. feel it. Yep. Okay, I think she's ready to make her picks. Now Judge Collier will select fourth through first place. We begin with fourth place. 
This is a lovely group of herding dogs. It's the kind of group any judge would be happy to have. I could place more than I'm going to place, but they only gave me four ribbons, so <laughs> I guess I have to start with fourth place. Fourth place tonight. Oops. I'll take <laughs> I didn't do that. <laughs> the steward <laughs> dropped the ribbons. <laughs> Dr. Yes, Davies. She did. <laughs> Fourth place is the Old English Sheepdog. Thank you for showing this. Congratulations. Sophia, fourth place. Hold on. I got it. <laughs> Third place is the Australian Shepherd. Tango, Australian Shepherd. Second place is the Shetland Sheepdog. Conrad, second place. And first place is the Border Collie. <laughs> there you have it, Slick, the Border Mrs. Collie. Mrs. Collier has chosen. Group first, the Border Collie. Second, the Shetland Sheepdog. Third, the Australian Shepherd. Fourth, Old English Sheepdog. Slick knows it too. Look at that tail wagging. Slick the Border Collie wins the herding group. The Old English Sheepdog, fourth. Australian Shepherd, third. The Shetland Sheepdog, second. And it's Slick the Border Collie who wins the herding group. And Sam Ryan is with the winner. With Jamie and Slick. And Jamie, what are those final moments like for you? Does it get nerve-wracking when the judge makes her short list? A little bit nerve-wracking, waiting to see who's going to win, especially when you're the last one's there, when they do it backwards. You're praying it's you, hoping it's you, whatever. It gets a little nerve-wracking. Go, boy. Slick has so much fun. How much fun does he have in the ring? He loves the show. It's one of his favorite things to do. And now he's not finished tonight. Now you think no. of best in show. Now we get one more round. Well, hello, Slick. He's saying hello. <laughs> Good job. Congratulations. Thank you very much. Back to you guys. And congratulations to Slick the Border Collie, who won the herding group. And yep. they're all difficult to win. Yet again, one of the top winning dogs of their breed has gone into best in show. Slick is the all-time top winning Border Collie. Hoping to win the national championship. Only the best of the best That's here. Right at the AKC National Championship. There's a winning face. And we are six sevenths of the way <laughs> through. Just the Terrier group is left. The French Bulldog took the non-sporting group. It was Whiskey the Whippet for the Hounds. Biggie the Pug trying to become the first from the toy group to win best in show. Kevin the Weinreimer from the sporting group. Quarita. From the working group, the Samoyed and the Border Collie Slick takes the herding group. As we go to break, let's take a look at the Tropical Clean breed trivia. 11 states of state dogs, South Carolina chose this breed, which was created there. Do you know which one? It's the Boykin Spaniel. We'll be right back. Just one more breed to go. We've got an ace award to give out and much more when we come back. Joined now by Darren Kassabaum, the co-owner of Cosmos Corporation. You've joined the national championship as the Tropiclean brand. Tell me, how did Tropiclean come to be? Yeah, my parents started the company back in the 80s. They had a real heart to uh, generate resource to help take care of kids who maybe have challenges and, and uh, specifically orphans. 
My brothers and I came in the 90s and we realized that most people were bathing their pets with um, dishwashing liquid. We thought, you know, there's got to be a better way. So we created Tropiclean, which is a brand of natural grooming products, you know, made from things like coconut and papaya. So the success that Tropiclean has had has really enabled us to fulfill my parents' lifelong dream, to start a orphanage in Guatemala, wow. where we actually care for about 75 kids and um, it provides you know health care food housing education the most recent thing is we just built a brand new school it is the nicest in the region and uh, so not only are we seeing the kids hearts healed but also giving them a first-rate education so really the success of tropicalin and the innovation and the culture has resulted in seeing my parents dream fulfilled oh, special and that's fantastic thank yeah. you so much darren thank you this is a Labrador Retriever. This is a Golden Retriever. They may seem similar, but when you take a closer look, the details tell a different story. These dogs eat, digest, and process energy differently. At Royal Canin, we obsess over these details. So we developed over 200 specific formulas for cats and dogs. Because precise nutrition can transform your pet into a magnificent animal. Royal Canin, incredible in every detail. The AKC Humane Fund Awards for Canine Excellence, also known as the ACE Awards, honor outstanding dogs that demonstrate the power and importance of the human-canine bond. This is the 19th year that the AKC has presented the awards to dogs in five categories. Exemplary Companion Dog, Search and Rescue Dog, Service Dog, Therapy Dog, and Uniform Services Canine. All five of our ACE winners receive a full year of pet health insurance, courtesy of our sponsor, Pet Partners, a supply of dog food, courtesy of Yukonuba, and a donation is made in the names to a pet charity by their owner's choice. Join us as we commend these very special dogs. Ladies and gentlemen, now entering the ring, our AKC Chief Financial Officer, Mr. Joe Bafudo, representing Yukonuba, Pro Sales Manager, Mr. Corey Norden. Tonight's first ACE recipient in the category of service dog, we have Samson, a three-year-old golden retriever with owner Joey Ramp of Fool's Land, Illinois. Every day, this golden retriever, Samson, and his owner, Joey Ramp, head to work in the neuroscience lab at the University of Illinois, where they tirelessly search for better treatments for PTSD sufferers. Currently, I'm conducting some research on early life adversity and PTSD, people with brain injuries, veterans, and domestic abuse survivors and, and child abuse survivors. My ultimate goal, though, in graduate work would be to try and establish new ways of treating brain damage to reduce or minimize the long-term psychological impact of brain injury. For Joey and Samson, their work is personal. Twelve years ago, Joey was in a terrible horse riding accident that left her shattered physically and mentally. 23 broken bones, including fractured vertebrae and traumatic brain injury. I was suicidal because I thought there was absolutely no hope for me. From the depths of her difficult experience, one thing got Joey through, her therapy dog. It's such a cliche to say that he saved my life, but he really, he, he saves it every day. He gives me a life. It's clear that Joey still struggles with her condition. Even during our interview, she was showing signs of distress that Samson could not ignore. Well, right now he knows I'm extremely anxious and he's telling me it's time to leave. <laughs> but Joey chose to stay, wanting to shed light on the difficulty that PTSD sufferers face and the mission that she and Samson are on. After my accident, everything I found on the internet was the top 10 things you need to know about PTSD, but there were no solutions. And then I decided, well, what if I could find the solution? So I decided I would go into neuroscience and figure it out. So that's why I'm here. 
Ladies and gentlemen, it is our pleasure to honor the 2018 American Kennel Club Humane Fund Ace Award Service Dog winner, Sampson. I'll tell you something, this is very much, a, this is a dual award. This is yeah. owner and dog. They're both amazing, um, so well deserved. I'm in awe of both of them. Me Thank too. you. <laughs> I mean, the ACE Awards in general really highlight some of the amazing usefulness One of our of most dogs. favorite programs at the American Kennel Club. And here's a, a look at our Ace Award winners for 2018. Teddy the Poodle, just an oh, incredible job. Story. The young man from Michigan. Cole the therapy dog who worked in Parkland after the shooting. Inspector Gadget, the bloodhound from California who's also a TV star. <laughs> and now Samson from Illinois and Joey Ramp helping people with P PTSD and looking for more solutions down the road. Just incredible stuff. Now it's time to turn back to the Tropiclean Ready Ring as we rejoin Sam Ryan. Yeah, that's right. And we have the Terrier group coming up and joining me right now, it's Tansy and Cindy, as you were anxiously awaiting your group, the final group of the night. You're always reading that Tansy likes to outsmart you. How does she do that? Well, Scotties always think their ideas are best. <laughs> and so the trick in being successful as an owner with these dogs is to convince them that your idea, they ought to give it, at least give it a try that it might be better. So lots of rewards for doing good and occasionally little corrections for following their own ideas. How challenging can that be? The worst part is the winter time when I'm standing outside going, come here, come here, come here. <laughs> Occasionally, I will lift a broom up in the air. It's a sort of a signal that says, you better come now. <laughs> They're pretty good, but they like, like to follow their own ideas. What is something about the breed that you can share with us that we may not know about Scotties? Well, for one thing, even though they're small dogs, their teeth are about the same size as the German Shepherds. Oh, let's Open see. Up the mouth. Oh, look at that. Thanks, Tansy. <laughs> Thank you, Cindy and Tansy. Thank you. Come and coming up, it is the Terrier Group, guys, the final group of the evening. All right, much more to come. Thanks to Sam Ryan from the Tropiclean Ready Ring. Much more to come, including the Terrier Group. But first, we've got diving dogs, and it's a sensation drawing crowds of thousands at events all around the country. In the sport, dogs run the length of a dock, leaping out as far as possible, competing for height and distance. At the AKC National Championship, we were treated to performances by the nation's best, including a spectacular achievement by a whippet named Sounder. The sport of dock jumping. We've got five different levels, but we also have two classes. We have an open dog, which is dogs over 16 inches at the withers, and we have a lap class, which are your little dogs. We got novice, junior, senior, master, and lead. This year, you see in the background, we've got what's called air retreat. You know, it's mostly designed for your bigger dogs, the distance, because they start out at six feet and have to grab the bumper. So it's really cool that we're having Guinness Book of World Records come to this event. There's dogs jumping now because it's an old record that, that is already broken, but not officially. We've even got dogs coming from Germany just so they can have the, the chance to attempt the world record. What we wanted to relate to all the other people out there is have fun with your dogs. I mean, that's what it's all about. We've got people that came to this. They knew they couldn't win the championship, but it's the experience of being at a big show, meeting other people, and having fun with their dogs. These dogs got some hops. Okay, coming up. We've got the best bred by exhibitor in show. What is that, Gina? So that's an event where each of the dogs being shown 
has to be bred by the exhibitor and owned by the exhibitor. So these dogs have been bred in the whelping box by the people who are running them around the ring. The winner gets $15,000. There were over 1,000 dogs competing today. We know that breeders are the heart and soul of the sport, and nowhere is that more evident than in our Breeders' Championship. This is Best Bred by Exhibitor in Show. Our stewards for Best Bred by Exhibitor in Show are Mr. Ronald H. Menneker, AKC Chairman of the Board, and Mr. Dennis B. Sprung, AKC Chief Executive Officer, President, and Show Chairman. Now, please welcome from Fort Worth, Texas, our judge, Mr. Ed E. Biven. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. We're going to. Whether they want us to right now or not. Thank you. Thank you. May we have the finalists to the ring, please. From the sporting group, the Retriever, Labrador, number 46, judged by Mrs. Danielle M. Brown. From the Hound group, the Whippet, number 43, judged by Mr. Michael Zabo. From the working group, the Portuguese water dog at number 40, judged by Mr. Terry Stacy. From the Terrier group, the Australian Terrier number 15, judged by Mrs. Rosalind Kramer. From the toy group, the Pekingese, number 12, judged by Mr. Dana P. Klein. From the non-sporting group, the Chinese Sharpei, number five, judged by Miss Patricia Proctor. From the herding group, the Australian Shepherd, number 117, judged by Miss Linda Roby. So we begin. Mr. Biven has been judging since he was about 15 years old. He does his first match show. He's approved to judge sporting, working, terrier, toy, non-sporting, almost everything, several herding and hounds. When you're 15, where do you start? What's the first step? Like a match show, which is a practice show that people can bring their dogs to to learn about how to show. That's how a lot of these people as breeders would have gotten started with a dog that they got from someone and they learned it and they loved it and now they've become breeders and each of these dogs they've held in their arms as they were puppies and raised them this is one of the truly <coughs> great honors and events to be able to win if you're a breeder we start with the Labrador Retriever how old? Do I This is Safori. Two best in shows to her credit. From Pennsylvania. Okay. Shown by her here. breeder owner, Fabian Nef Neg Negron, sorry. And as we learned last night, the most popular family dog in the United States. 
for many years now, the Labrador Retriever. Absolutely. Andrea, thank you, sir. <coughs> And this is Whiskey the Whippet from the Hound Group. That's right. He won the Hound Group yesterday. We'll see him a little later in Best in Show. But first, he's going to try to win Best Bread by Exhibitor in Show. I mean, what a year for Whiskey. What yeah. makes what makes whis uh, Whiskey sort of next level? Why is why is he winning so much? because there are dogs that are exceptionally conforming to their breed standard in all the right ways, in all the most important ways. And this is Justin Smithy, Whiskey's breeder, owner, handler. He's been showing whippets and purchased his first whippet when he was 16 years old. The number one hound in America right now. Beautiful outline. It's a very s a breed of curving outline. It's a curving outline. It's beautiful. Nice chiseled head. Very athletic. As we saw in the dock diving, the dogs setting the records were whippets. How old? How old is it? She's a big girl. Here we have the Portuguese water dog. This is Honey. From Columbus, Georgia. As we just heard over the microphones, Honey is three okay. years mm -hmm. old. She's <coughs> just really starting off her show career. She started in agility and now has progressed to other aspects of the dog sports. She does agility, water work, dock diving. Portuguese water dogs are very athletic. They love the water bred to work in the water, retrieving nets from fishermen. Okay, right around there. Here we have the Australian Not Terrier. Three. Three-year-old. Of course, the Terrier group is coming up in just a little bit. And that's, that's right. The final group to get through before we get to Best in Show. This is really all-purpose dog for the farm. They weren't bred for any particular task. They have a very strong prey drive. They come from Australia. They're used for killing rats and okay. snakes, back, for herding please. sheep and geese. They make great watchdogs. Very hardy, sturdy, athletic dog. Look at those little sparkling eyes, dark eyes. There they are. And you want to do that again? And this is. Come over here. Move away a little. <laughs> Short distance. There we go. It's giving him a better chance to do a little better down and back. That's what he's I was He's a little distracted. I was wondering why he asked him to run That's again. A good yep. boy. Good boy. He wants to give him his best opportunity to shine. Look at that beautiful. Thank you, and a round please. The Pekingese, number 12. You?
this is Primrose, who we saw during the toy group yesterday. Yep, she got a group fourth in the toy group. She's young. She's just two years old. Shown <laughs> by her breeder owner, David Fitzpatrick from Pennsylvania. She is the granddaughter of Malachi that went best in show at Westminster in 2012. Mm. Look at that rectangular face. That's perfect and beautiful. Okay. Out and back. There's a lot to feel under this coat, too, when you're judging this breed. Got to get your hands under there and feel the body shape. Fine. Must brush everything so she's perfect <laughs> before she goes. <laughs> I have to make you smile. She's got that wobbly kind of gait. That's right. It's because they're heavier uh, in the front than the back, and they have little bowed legs in the front. And it creates this very correct motion. But they're hardy and athletic. I had a friend of mine had one. She loved to look, play catch. She loved... Really? Yeah. Thank you. It's not hard to get them the exercise they need, but they do need a little exercise. Walks and playing fetch. Look <laughs> at that face. So happy. From the non-sporting group, the Chinese Sharpei, number five. Oh. Speaking of an unmistakable face, the, the Chinese Sharpei with all of those wrinkles. Absolutely. Hippopotamus shaped head. Has a very harsh uh, sandpaper like texture to their coat. One of the breeds with a blue black tongue. And the head is very distinctive. Out and back for me, not too fast. This is Artie. Let's step over this way, Bill. 44 group wins, 178 best of breeds, seven best in shows. Artie's a winner. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Loves chicken nuggets and Stella <laughs> beer, I hear. <laughs> <laughs> I could go for both <laughs> right about now. <laughs> Waiter. <laughs> Every morning, he stands on his owner's chest to wake him up <laughs> <laughs> and puts his head on top of his tummy. How cute is that? Hey. Built, in, built an alarm yep, clock. Yep, it's awesome. Yeah. Very athletic. He's going around there. From the herding group, the Australian Shepherd, Hello. number 117. Thank you. This is Tango. From the great state of Washington. Yep. Number one Australian Shepherd, all systems. Top 20 winner. Six best in shows. Out and back one. The same Australian Shepherd that we just saw in the Indeed. herding group placed in the herding group just a few moments ago. And a crowd favorite for sure. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he didn't get much rest between the herding group and now he's right back in there. He's showing great. Oh, it's Ben, that's cute. Well, we know the, Aust the Australian Shepherds have a lot of energy. That's right, he can go all day, so it's not going to hurt him that he just came out of the herding group. Yep. Can I ask that you take them, leave, bring them out, let them stand over here. I want to look at them, please. Hands off. Okay? I'm going to ask you to go around one at a time. Come out over here, let them stand up, and then come around. Lab for me. At Biven with very explicit instructions, hands off. That's right. Best way to see a dog, free stacked. It's Thank all you, dog, no handler Thank right you. there. Whip it.
Now, what's interesting is that they don't immediately go all the way around. Why do they stop Thank and you, do a little circle? And uh, well, he wants them to stop and free stack before they go around so yeah. he can get, see their outline and have them stand on their own without the handler adjusting them. Mm -hmm. Sometimes when they stop, they do a spin because when you train them, you get you pull them. Yeah, you just train them to make a circle. To, it's to easier stop. to stop for a square if you Thank can you keep sir. moving. Mm -hmm. He's taking a good look at these dogs. He was really eyeing them as Absolutely. they go around. He's got to pick his, the best, and that's hard to do. Yeah, this is Australian Terrier. Thank you very much. We're going to do it. A, we're going to do it a little different with the Pekingese. Just take her out here, and I'm going to ask you to pick her up. Okay. So let's go through that again. This is best bred by exhibitor in show. What exactly does that mean? Well, this is one of the highest honors that you can win at any dog show. One. The owner of this, this dog also bred this dog and is showing this dog. And he's picking up the dog because one of the most Thank important you. things and about around. that breed is the head. And he wants to see it up close. Yep, I'm going to fix her. Fix her tail, Primrose. Mm -hmm. Aww. Just keep going. <laughs> there she goes. She put it right back up. <laughs> She's got a little bit of enough. <laughs> She's like, I walked a lot. <laughs> How cool then. All these handlers have seen these dogs from birth, pretty mm -hmm. much. That's right. Breeders are the heart and soul of our sport. And around, sir. Right around. Thank you. They keep these dogs in the public's eye. They provide them as you know, pets for American, the American public. The best way to get a dog is from a responsible breeder. Here we go, the Australian Shepherd Tango. Thank you, sir. That's very pretty. Thank you. <laughs> wow. That's nice. Yeah, that was well done. Yep. Sometimes that's enough right there, right? Catch the judge's eye. Right. Because Tango definitely stood out. Yep, he pulled himself up. But, yeah. Yep, that's what happens. Good show, dog. And now, when we walk the line, he's going to award one big, beautiful ribbon to someone. Thank you. Just let him relax a bit. Who's best Thank bred you. by exhibitor and show. Also awarded a $15,000 prize. Will our presenters for the best bred by exhibitor in show ceremony please enter the ring? Yeah, no narrowing of the field <laughs> here. Yep. This is straight to straight to the judging. Best. Yeah. Come out all the dignitaries, I'll say. So this <laughs> is no four three two one. This nope, is just this one. Is one. This is best bred by exhibitor in show. Our presenters this evening are Mr. Dennis B. Sprung, AKC Chief Executive Officer, President, and Show Chairman. <laughs> Mr. Ronald H. Meneker, AKC Chairman of the Board. Mrs. Amanda Hilton, Royal Canaan Pro Marketing Director. <laughs> Mr. Brian Bunsall, Royal Canaan National Pro Sales Manager. <laughs> Mrs. Erica Vogt, Royal Canaan Pro Brand Manager. Mr. Bibbon will now select the 2018 AKC National Championship Best Bred by Exhibitor in Show. I don't need to tell you what a lovely lineup that is, you know. I want to tell you that it was <coughs> important. It's my pleasure to judge it. Thank you for bringing the dogs and presenting them so well. Best Bred by Exhibitor is the Whippet. <laughs> 
Mr. Biven has selected the Whippet as the 2018 AKC National Championship Best Bred by Exhibitor in Show. There you have it, Whiskey the Whippet, another feather in his cap. Best Bred by Exhibitor in Show. And the hits just keep on coming for Whiskey. <laughs> Having a good day. <laughs> Having a good day, having a good year. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. And hoping to have a great night at the end of the night. But mm -hmm. still a little bit of a ways to go for whiskey. Still have the Terrier group. We have another Ace Award. And then the moment we've all been waiting for. That's right. Best in show. And now let's send it down to the ring with Sam Ryan. With Justin and whiskey, congratulations. When you think about how personal this is from the beginning, with whiskey, what does this and the prestige of this award mean to you? Well, when you think about a little dog that was born by your bed and you raised him up for three years to sort of be at the pinnacle of his success, I think it's as good as you can do. A successful year, a successful weekend for whiskey, obviously. Whiskey isn't finished. Whiskey's going on to best in show, as we know. But when, from the beginning with whiskey, what was it in the transition about whiskey that really you know, made, made Whiskey a successful show dog. To, to what, what did you see? He had the confirmation as a little baby, and we developed the personality as he grew, taking him to shows, keeping him out, socializing with people and other dogs. And it just, he developed into what he is today, just from some tender love and care along the way. Well, congratulations, and we'll see you a little bit later. Okay, thank you. Okay. Congratulations. Yeah. And just a fantastic honor for Whiskey and his owner as Whiskey the Whippet from the Hound Group takes the best bred by exhibitor in show as we march towards best in show. Coming up, we've got the Terrier Group, the final group, when we come back from the AKC National Championship Dog Show. My favorite part about being a breeder is putting that puppy into a person's hands. The relationship between the owner and breeder is really important. It's something that's ongoing for the life of the dog. Some of them live in my home. Some of them I don't ever want to let go. Running around and playing with dogs all week long, it's nothing better. The most important thing that you're going to want is a healthy dog. When we sell a puppy to a new family, they become part of our family. We're there to help them for the life of the dog. We love our pets, and what they eat out of is just as important as what they eat. That's why WeatherTech developed the Pet Comfort Feeding System, entirely non-toxic and lead-free, made from 100% U.S. stainless steel, and the only pet bowl certified by the NSF. The stand and mat are made from an FDA-approved material enhanced with antimicrobial and antifungal additives. It all adds up to a completely non-toxic feeding system for your pet. Find out everything you need to know at PetComfort.com. This is no ordinary puppy, and this is no ordinary story. This is the tale of a hero in the making. He is born, raised, and fed to make the impossible possible. Because he is no ordinary dog. He's a Yukonuba dog. Feed the extraordinary in your puppy and make your dog a Yukonuba dog. From the Orange County Convention Center in Orlando, Florida, this is the 2018 AKT National Championship presented by Royal Canin. We are six-sevenths of the way through determining who will be up for best in show, and now it's time for our final group. It's the Terrier Group. Now it's time for our final group of the evening, the Terrier Group. Our steward for the Terrier Group is AKC board member, Mr. Harold Red Tatro III. And please welcome, from Chicago, Illinois, our judge, Dr. Jerry Klein. Have a great time, folks. Thank you. Thank you. May we have the Terrier Group, please.
Bringing in the Terriers, a feisty, tenacious bunch, was, one and all. I was going to say, they come in with <laughs> some Making some attitude <laughs> yes. in this area. About 30 Terriers, tall and small. A lot of them have sim similar physical characteristics, That's it looks right. like. All, most of them are from one special part in the world. Europe, England, Ireland, Scotland. But they all have their distinctive features. Of course, we're going to get to all of that. So let's take a deeper dive into the Terrier group and what we might be able to expect from the Terriers. Well, they're bred for hunting and killing vermin found on the ground or under the ground. They, the short-legged Terriers were bred to work in rocky dens with small headroom. These breeds are all high energy and always keep them active and alert. Our judge tonight, Dr. Klein, began his dog show career with wire fox terriers. Then he turned his attention to Afghan hounds and bred many champion Afghan hounds over the years. He's been judging since 1985. He's judged all over the world, nine different countries. And this is a bit of a first that we've seen where the judge is really eyeballing all of the dogs before they actually come up individually. So he's walking the line. He's getting his initial thoughts. Do owners, when they see which judge they have in their group, have an idea of what that judge tends to look for? I mean, everyone has yeah. to have certain... Sure, well... What they when you, know, you do it week in and week out, you show to s judges often more than once in a year. Mm -hmm. And you learn by watching the judge what they like in certain breeds. And you as an exhibitor have either won or lost under them w before, if, if you've shown to them before. But every day is a new day at a dog show. And to compare the dogs, you're comparing them to their written standard. But at some point, you know. You're looking at them versus the other dogs in right. the ring. There is a human element Yeah, that's involved. absolutely right. And we start with the king of the terriers. Here comes the Airedale. Airedale Terrier. Good evening. Developed Good evening. near the Air River in Yorkshire, England, Airedale Terriers are the largest of the terrier breeds a cross between the early black and tan terrier and the otter hound. They were bred to hunt foxes, badgers, and the like. Airedales love to make friends with people, and one of their greatest joys is playing with children. This is Airedale Terrier number seven. You said king of the terriers. Is that a size thing? Mm-hmm, because they're the largest. They have wonderful, feisty attitudes. They're deceptively strong. Also used to hunt and course game. Like most terriers, they have this broken coat, so they have to be hand stripped or clipped. What is a broken coat? So it's this wiry texture to the coat, and it doesn't shed. It continues to grow, and you have to pull out the dead the dead hairs, or you'll get a much more fuzzy, fluffy look to the to the coat. This is Kaz, the Airedale Terrier. He's the number one Airedale. They're wonderful pets. They're very intuitive. They love their families. Naturally protective, friendly personalities. Kerry Blue Terrier. Developed in the rugged Closer. mountainous Closer. area of Thank County you. Kerry, Ireland, from which they take their name, hardworking Kerry Blue Terriers yeah. have been used as ratters, hunters, guards, and to herd sheep and cattle. They even have been used as police dogs in England. The blue in his name comes from the color of their soft and silky coat. This is Kerry Blue Terrier, number 25. Thank you, sir. Down and back, please. Zooey is being shown tonight by Connor McFadden, who's a second generation handler. His parents are showing in this group. Yes, they are. They're I mean, that's we'll awesome point them out. <laughs> and awkward, right? I mean, you're competing against each other in a way. They've learned from, he's learned from his parents, yeah. Bill and Taffy McFadden. 
Oh, I'm sure he both wants both very to win. good handlers. Absolutely. This is Azul, which is perfect blue. This is a carry blue terrier. Like he's very rubber and greasy. He loves to ride the tractor. He has a herd of goats that he puts in the barn each night, doing what he was bred to do. Travels a lot in the RV with his family. Soft-coated Wheaton Good Terrier. Evening. How are you? Although medium in size, soft-coated Wheaton Terriers are still one of the largest Terriers. Alert and steady companions, they combine a happy outlook with a courageous spirit. The breed has been known in Ireland for more than 200 years and is possibly the forerunner of the Kerry Blue Terrier. Wheaton served as herding and guard dogs and undertook the typical Terrier duties of rat control. This is soft-coated Wheaton Terrier number 43. There's that classic long hair that's longer over the eyes and on the chin. It's one of the larger terriers used for herding and a good guardian. They're happy, courageous. You have to brush them frequently. The coat does mat. It's one of the few coats that you don't have to strip. Very popular. Yeah. See, you see a lot of families get them. They, people like them because they don't shed. And rubber. But the coat, just because it doesn't shed, the coat still needs some maintenance. I see one of these guys out by the bus stop every oh, yeah? day. Yeah, we got one in the neighborhood. Hello, ma'am. How are you? American Staffordshire Terrier. Thank you, ma'am. American Staffordshire Terriers combine the best qualities of the two breeds from which they were derived, the spirit and gameness of the Terrier and the courage and boldness of the Bulldog. Bred to be fighting dogs in the 19th century, the AM Staff is by nature a calm and quiet dog who loves his family with all his heart. This is American Staffordshire Terrier number 11. Thank you, ma'am. No, no. This is Louie the top winning American Staffordshire Terrier of all time. 38 best in shows, a multiple specialty winner. This is such an amazing breed. They love their family with all their heart. They'll guard them just as dearly. They're a large dog in a medium sized package. Great strength for their size. His owner says that at this year's Westminster Kennel Club at AKC Meet the Breeds, he connected with a severely autistic child right? and just Hugged it and held it. Wow. This show, shows us what a truly amazing temperament this breed really has. Gotta love Louie. Irish Terrier. Nicknamed the Daredevil, the Irish Terrier is a loyal and friendly dog. Deeply sir, devoted to their owners, they are enthusiastic playmates That's and guardians advice. of children. One of the oldest Thank of the terrier know. breeds, the Irish bears many similarities to the Airedale, Welsh, and Wire Fox Terriers, and is every bit as smart and quick. This is Irish Terrier number five. It's one of the oldest terrier breeds. To protect their eyes from vermin, they have this prominent bone above and below their eyes. They're good tempered, they're brave, but gentle. And dense, wiry coat. Rectangular in shape, which is one of the few terriers that's a rectangular in shape. This is P9, multiple group and best in show winner, the national specialty winner in California. I think he might be Pi. You think? Yeah, because he's the Pied Piper. Oh, there you go. Sorry. That's okay. I couldn't read the handwriting of the owner. <laughs> I wonder what the daredevil, I wonder <laughs> I wonder what Pi does, like the daredevil. It's so crazy breed. and wild. Yeah. We'll try anything. Yeah. Good evening, sir. How are you? <laughs> nice you Colored you Bull me. Terrier. There are mm, two varieties for the Bull Terrier breed. The colored, as seen here, and the white. Their origin dates back to about 1835. Strong, muscular, and active, this breed is full of fire, but sweet of disposition. 
In accordance with its standard, the colored variety must be any color other than white or any color with white, just as long as the white does not predominate. This is the colored bull terrier. And this is colored bull terrier number six. And this is Rebel. And talk about Talk about a dog breed that stops traffic in the hotel where all the dogs are. I think people would comment on the bull terriers more than anyone because well, of that the nose, right? Egg-shaped head, yeah, yeah. The gentle curve from the skull to the top of the nose. Rebel loves to swim. Plays dead on command and commando crawls across the floor. Is there a, um, for that shape of the head, mm -hmm. is there something specific that it's used for? Is there... No, it's, it would develop. I'm sure it has an acute sense of smell, and they need to get their nose down there to find the vermin. It's very unique and beautiful. This is the white bull terrier. White oh, bull yeah. terrier. It's your dog bite. Except for color, white bull terriers share an identical standard Thank with you. the colored. Their standard states that their color is white, though markings on the head are permissible. Any markings elsewhere on the co coat are to be severely faulted. This is the White Bull Terrier, and this is White Bull Terrier number seven. See, they call him Creed, <laughs> but his registered <laughs> name is the one and only I'm So Fly, <laughs> which is such a better name. <laughs> <laughs> well, Creed is from Puerto Rico. Yeah. He's won best in show and limited showing. This is a breed that loves to be the center of attention. They love interaction with their family. It can be clownful, loving and devoted to their owners for sure. And around the ring too. And Creed's definitely playing to the crowd and has some fans out there too. Staffordshire Bull Terrier. The coal miners of Staffordshire, England combined the bulldog with a small terrier similar to the Manchester Terrier. The result was the Staffordshire Bull Terrier that we know today. They are dogs of high intelligence who are obedient and possess great courage. Staffordshire Bull Terriers are sweet-tempered, affectionate dogs who respond well to training. This is Staffordshire Bull Terrier number 25. This is Stan from Montreal, Canada. He speaks French and English, or Very maybe nice. not. <laughs> His owner and handler, Emily Burden, is a third generation dog handler. So Stan loves to run. He's even tried diving dogs. But his favorite thing to do is to hog the bed and keep everyone awake with his snoring. <laughs> <laughs> Very strong, agile, lovely family dog. Hello, sir. How are you? Rat Terrier. The Rat Terrier is a multi-purpose companion dog originally bred to hunt rodents and vermin. He is a sturdy, compact, small to medium-sized, party-colored dog, giving the appearance of elegance and athleticism. His short, smooth coat requires regular brushing. The Rat Terrier is loyal and active and loves being a member of his human family. This is Rat Terrier number 33. This is Trip. His owner says he can be in your arms in a blink of an eye because he loves to be in your lap. He just jumps right up there. They're a very inquisitive, loyal breed can be reserved with strangers. They're very protective of their families, but they're busy and they're active. Hmm. And train them to do just about anything. Trip looks like he'd be a good agility dog. Yep. That has that kind of athleticism. Absolutely. <laughs> Bedlington Terrier. Taking their name from the English mining oh, town of Bedlington, these gutsy terriers' most distinctive feature is their curly, woolly coat. 
The Bedlington Terrier is sometimes described as having the head of a lamb and the heart of a lion. Neither fussy nor mischievous, the Bedlington appears outwardly calmer or milder than some other terriers. Loving and with a big heart, they make a lively playmate for children. This is Bedlington Terrier number 17. And this is Zoolander, another breed that really turned heads in the hotel lobby for sure. Yes, they have a distinctive head, distinctive arch over their back. See, you wouldn't have, it wouldn't have shocked me if you said this was a herding dog that herded lambs <laughs> because it could, it could, you know, just blend well, they, they in. They say it looks like the yeah. lamb is a, looks like a lamb, has the heart of a lion. They're athletic, a very unique structure. They can sprint, pivot on a dime. They think that that arch comes from some whippet in its history. Zoolander is being shown by Gabby Gulboch. We saw Good her in the me. Best uh, Breeder of the Year award ceremony last night. They won the Terrier Group Breeder of the Year. And Zoolander won the Terrier Group at the Puppy Stakes on Friday. Oh man, how are you? Standard Manchester Terrier. Sleek and tidy, place. Manchester Terriers are the picture of elegance in a small dog. Always black and tan, the standard variety should be over 12 pounds, but not exceed 22. The Manchester has a quick, protective nature. Very much a part of the family, they are happiest with gentle children and are deeply attached to them. This is standard Manchester Terrier number five. There's that classic long wedge-shaped head. This is a very brave little dog. They're super Super loyal, independent, one of the oldest documented terrier breeds. They almost look computer generated when they're moving around. They're Just so beautiful. Oh my and they have strong bone. They're feisty little good, feisty little dudes, I like to say. This is <laughs> Riot, number one standard Manchester all systems last year and this year. They look like mini Dobermans to me a little well, bit. Well, the coloration is the same, yeah. and they both have the same an ancestry, which is the uh, now extinct old. Uh, black and tan terrier. Oh, so there is a link. Yeah, there's, a, there's a very distant link, yes. They're extremely popular pet in Victorian times. And today, not as well known, but they're wonderful. Hello, how are you? Can I see your dog's bike, please? Thank you, ma'am. American Hairless Terrier. The American Hairless Terrier is a small to medium-sized active terrier whose ancestors were bred to hunt vermin. Slippery. They come in hairless and Sorry. coated varieties, both of which carry the hairless gene. Since they cause fewer allergic reactions than other breeds, they can be ideal for allergy sufferers. The AHT's intelligence and friendliness make them perfect companions that also possess the drive to excel in performance events. This is American Hairless number nine. Kai, number one American hairless terrier in 2018. Loves to dock dive in his spare time. Likes to swim. This is one of our newer breeds, admitted to the American Kennel Club in 2016. Do you need to put these guys like in sweaters in cold weather? Yes, you do, and you should probably Thank put sunblock on them in the Ooh, summer. Wouldn't so have that thought their skin of that. doesn't burn. They're active, intelligent, very energetic. Great little dog for agility. Miniature Schnauzer. One of the few terriers not created in Great Britain, the Miniature Schnauzer was developed in the late 19th century in Germany. The breed was originally bred to be a small farm dog, able to go to ground for various vermin. They are devoted playful and quick to learn, having success in confirmation as well as all of the companion events. This is Miniature Schnauzer, number 35. Miniature Schnauzer is one of the more popular terrier breeds. Thank you, ma'am. They're very smart, make great companions. This nice little wiry coat, doesn't shed. Bred down from its larger cousin, the standard schnauzer that we saw in the working group. 
That bushy beard and eyebrows gives them a really charming little human-like expression. Very pretty, the ring, very you. pretty. They like medium activity level, great little learners, smart dogs. Sounds like a terrific family it's dog then. It's a great family dog. Here's another great family dog. Good evening, how are you? Border Terrier. Border Terriers get their name from the border area between England and Thank Scotland. You. Alert with a cheerful, sensible manner, they were developed especially to catch the foxes that stalked farmers' livestock. Most interested in being with their owners, Borders are good-natured and loving companions who are always eager for praise. This is Border Terrier number 20. There's that otter-shaped head with a broad, it's flat beautiful. skull and full cheeks. It's the trademark of the breed. Thank you, Diamondback. And this is Mary Jane, and her favorite toy is anything that resembles a live rat, because that's what terriers are known to Absolutely. go after. These guys had to be small enough to squeeze into a foxhole, but large enough to keep up with a horse. Very smart and inquisitive. Great little breed. Mary Jane just finished her championship at the Border Terry National Specialty in September. Thank you, ma'am. We're on the ring, please. Smooth Fox Terrier. The Fox Terrier is an old Hello. English breed originally bred for the sport of fox hunting. For almost 100 years, they were registered and shown in the United States as one Thank breed you. with two varieties, smooth and wire. However, in 1984, the American Kennel Club approved separate standards, officially making them two distinct breeds. This is Smooth Fox Terrier number nine. This is Eli from St. Joseph, Missouri. Really cool markings on the face, like half. And patches of color, yeah. Yeah, just half and half it looks like, right? Absolutely beautiful. You catch them from one profile or another and he looks like a different dog. Yep. Sometimes you'll see them, even if they have more beautiful markings on one side or the other, the owners will flip them around and show them backwards so you ah. can see the, the coloration. It would be mostly white with these colored patches winner of the American Fox Terrier Club National Specialty in Montgomery County this year. Number one Smooth Fox Terrier National Owner Handled Series. Thank you, ma'am. We're on the ring, please. Very brave little breed. Tenacious. They're supposed to go down the hole after the fox. If <laughs> it got down there and the hounds couldn't get it. They're super brave. Wire Fox Terrier. Believed to be the slightly younger of the two breeds, this English breed was used for hunting fox. Good evening, How are you? The coat is harsh wire in texture, virtually non-shedding. However, it does require it's regular fact, brushing. He should be hardy you, and full of energy. This is Wire Fox Terrier number 15. And this is Arthur from California. He is a canine good citizen and also does trick dog. I'd love to see him do a couple tricks here. <laughs> I know it's not part of the thing, but it'd be kind of cool. Yes, and this is Dr. Klein's original terrier breed, Wire Fox. Thank you, ma'am. Down back, please. And so Arthur's going to take a run down and back. We're just about halfway through the Terrier group right now. 15 mm. down. So what we'll do is, as Arthur takes his run, and one more look by the judge. 
after Arthur is through, what we'll do is we'll take a quick break, but not until Arthur's done, but we'll take a <laughs> quick break and then we'll come back with the rest of the Terrier group as we inch ever closer to best in show. We're getting there. This is our last, this is our last <laughs> group to right. be judged. And before we go to break, we got the more Terriers on the other side. How about uh, some weather tech trivia question? This is one of the few breeds in the Terrier group that does not originate in Great Britain. Yorkshire, the miniature Schnauzer, the West Highland White Terrier, or the Border Terrier, what do you think? Of course, it's the miniature Schnauzer. We'll be back with the rest of the Terriers right after this. Finally, a truly non-toxic feeding system is now available for your dog or cat. The Pet Comfort Feeding System by WeatherTech with bowls made from 100% U.S. stainless steel, lead-free, radiation-free, and the only bowls to be certified by the NSF. The elevated stand locks to the non-slip mat, and both are made from an FDA-approved material enhanced with antimicrobial and antifungal additives. Trust the way you feed your pet. Order the perfect size and color at PetComfort.com. There are certain breeds that are gonna be great apartment dogs if you live in New York City. There's gonna be other breeds that are fabulous working dogs for you if you're out on a ranch. He is my best friend. AKC.org is the best place to start because they have all the information about any breed you can think of. What's not to love about this face? <laughs> This is a Labrador Retriever. This is a Golden Retriever. They may seem similar, but when you take a closer look, the details tell a different story. These dogs eat, digest, and process energy differently. At Royal Canin, we obsess over these details. So we developed over 200 specific formulas for cats and dogs, because precise nutrition can transform your pet into a magnificent animal. Royal Canin, incredible in every detail. Welcome back as we continue with the Terrier group. About halfway through, this is our final group before we get the best in show. We have about 15 more Terriers to get through. Dr. Klein starts with the Welsh Terrier in our second half. Welsh Terrier. Bred to hunt otter, fox, and badger, Welsh Terriers are delightful companions, always well, looking for action good. and entertainment. They it's look the similar to their cousin, the Lakeland, though slightly stockier. Thank you. They also resemble the Airedale, though the Welsh is smaller. Originally, this breed was known as the Old English Terrier or Black and Tan Wire-Haired Terrier, but this is Welsh Terrier number seven. And this is Dazzle from Knoxville, Tennessee. This is a very old breed. They're always black and tan. They were first brought to the U.S. very long time ago, 1800s. Sturdy, rugged, smart, fun breed. <laughs> Maybe. There you go. A lot of these terriers have the, the, the similar look, as I mentioned, but mm -hmm. they also look so well-groomed. Is it Are they easy to maintain, these dogs? To make them look like this is not necessarily easy because there's lots of stripping and precision to the coat. But as a pet, you can easily just shave down the coat to keep it trim and it doesn't mat and it doesn't shed. So in those, you know, they for that, it's, it's nice to have in the house. And they're all beautiful, that's for sure. Dazzle's the number one Welsh Terrier in breed points for best in shows. Australian Terrier. One of the smallest of the Terriers, Australian Terriers were developed in the harsh conditions of the Australian okay. Outback, where they served as ratters, sentinels, and even as sheep herders. Ready for any situation, Aussies consider themselves part of the family and get along well with other animals and with children. This is Australian Terrier number five. This is 
Bacon <laughs> from Muskego, Wisconsin. And his owner yeah. says that Bacon's kids are called Bacon Bits. <laughs> <laughs> well, everybody loves yep. bacon, so I'm sure everybody loves bacon. He is the number one Australian Terrier. This is a very athletic dog. They're excellent at climbing, great little jumpers. There's wide set eyes and prick ears are characteristics of the breed. They make good little watchdogs. They're very hardy and confident. Love this breed. They and one of the few terriers that doesn't come from Great Britain area, I'm from Australia. Lakeland Terrier. Lakeland Terriers originated in the beautiful Lake Good District evening, in Northern England. Evening, back, Farm farmers often gathered their hounds along with a group of Lakelands to deal with foxes that were stealing their chickens. Frisky, feisty, and fun, they love to be the center of their owner's life. This is Lakeland Terrier number 11. Ike. Ike the Lakeland Terrier. It's a beautiful breed. The body should be deep and relatively narrow so they could squeeze into rocky dens. If they're generally more quiet in the house than some terriers, but still bold and brave and confident. Are terriers notoriously loud? No, but they're feisty and they're energetic, and some of them are barky. Uh, in general, this is a more quiet terror than some of the others, like the Scotties or the Westies, that love to let you know they're around. Thank you, sir. It's very pretty. Very pretty picture right there. Hi, how are you? Parson Russell Terrier. Originating in southern England nearly 200 years ago, Parson Russell Terriers were developed as a fox hunting breed. Known in this country as early as the 1930s, the Parson Russell is a terrier among terriers, buoyant and intelligent, determined and relentless. They are endowed with the inability to quit and no capacity to feel fear, Thank you. regardless of the odds or consequences. This is Parson Russell Terrier back, number nine. Please. Toodles, the terrier of terriers. Yes, this is one of the highest energy terriers that they are. They are non-stop, go, go. This is the top winning Parson Russell Terrier of all time with 14 best in shows. And today is Toodle's last dog show. He's retiring wow. no matter what happens. This is Thank you, ma'am, we're on the Final road. show. I was going to just say he's a big, goofy house dog and loves his kids <laughs> at home, so I'm sure he'll be just as happy. He'll be just as happy on the couch as he is on this red carpet. Yeah, or in the yard or anything. Absolutely. Yeah. Remember, these are all family pets. Yeah. Hello. Russell Terrier. That's Originating in England and developed in Australia, the Russell Terrier Thank is a man. feisty, energetic dog bred to hunt fox and find vermin below ground. These small, playful dogs are confident and highly intelligent. Russell Terriers are devoted family companions, doing best with families with an active lifestyle. Their weatherproof coat requires minimal grooming beyond brushing and occasional bathing. This is Russell Terrier number five. <laughs> Look at that face. Isn't that adorable? Yeah, this Domingo. Is Domingo. Six best in shows, the number one Russell All Systems. Very strong, hardy breed, full of life. It's lots of confidence. Thank you, ma'am. Very active. Karen Terrier. The Karen Terrier is so closely well, related to the Scottish and West Highland White Terriers that they often used to come from the same litters. Earlier in their histories, the types were defined as different from each other by color only.
Though small, cairns are not much for the pampered life. They prefer to explore and play lively games and can be equally happy in the city or on the farm. This is Cairn Terrier number nine. This is Nathan, and, and from the description, it's like a looks can be deceiving type of dog. <laughs> this looks like a dog that you'd want on your lap all day, but it wants no part of that. Oh, they are a rugged, no-nonsense breed. Curious, quick, very strong and hardy. There's wide set eyes, shaggy eyebrows. <laughs> those keen, foxy expression. But they're great pets. And they're, they're just more active than you might think. And that's a great thing about bringing the dog shows to television. The people at home can watch and learn about the different breeds and see that there's so many options for your family and do a little research and find the ones that are right for I you. There's so many cool breeds out there, including the Karen. Yeah, the Karen, <laughs> a great looking dog. Yep, I mean, look at wonderful. that face. Glenn of Imal Terrier. Glenn of Imal Terrier, developed in a remote region of County Wicklow in Ireland, oh, were initially yeah. developed to rid the home and farm of vermin, Thank as well you. as to hunt badger and fox. They had an additional job as the turnpit dog, you, a canine propelled rotisserie. Game and spirited, with great courage when called upon, the Glen is otherwise gentle and docile. This is Glenn of Imal Terrier, number seven. Look at that face. <laughs> <laughs> Similar to the Karen, a little bit bigger, right? A little bit stouter, it seems. Yeah, broader head, yeah. wiry coat, scruffy, sturdy. He's a low-bodied terrier. His front legs are a little slightly bowed, moderately <laughs> short. Look at that. I think they're adorable. They are. Ridiculously cute, I'll say. Yep. Taylor, <laughs> you're a good-looking boy. Taylor's the number one Glenn in the United States for 17 hmm. and 18. Six best in shows, a national specialty winner. The owner model. says that they love tr that they get to travel around the United States and the world, going to dog shows, meeting people, seeing places, and showing off their Glen of a Malls. He's a big kisser, apparently, yeah. Taylor. Adorable. Miniature Bull Terrier. The miniature bull terrier is in every way, oh, so except size, you? exactly like the bull terrier. Descended from the bulldog and the white English terrier, bull terriers were meant at first to be tough fighting dogs. That quality never spoiled their love of people, though. A little bundle of strength, the mini bull requires a firm, confident owner who is consistent in enforcing the rules. This is miniature bull terrier number 18. Slippery tape. And this is Huxley, mini bull terrier from Oak Forest, Illinois. She took a little time out of the show ring to have two litters of puppies, and now she's back. This is an adorable little breed, full of life, great personality. They're strong, born little show-offs, I'll say. They're active, alert, curious. Very pretty. Thanks for take her around the ring, please. And in every way, the mini is a bull terrier, but smaller. Celium terrier. Originally from Wales, oh, celium terriers were bred to go after foxes, you. badgers, and otters. Celium was the name of the estate of Captain John Edwards, the man most responsible for the breed as we know it today. The Celium packs as much spunk and substance into a little terrier body while still being a graceful and friendly dog. This is Celium Terrier number 17. Celium with its long, broad head, lavish facial hair. One of the strongest and most substantial small dogs that we have. It's like a little running back. Powerful, well-muscled. This is Cooper. California native. He's the number one Celium Terrier in the United States. They're 
outgoing. They can be stubborn, but it's very brave. One of the rarest breeds that we have. I think it's so amazing that we can see all these Take rare breeds that people have never seen, you know, out on the street and in your neighborhood. But this may be the breed that's right for you. Right. Sit up on the couch next to you. They don't have to be rare. No, that's right. Yeah. And that's what these breeders do. They dedicate their lives to these breeds so that they're available for Remember people me. for years to come. Oh, that's nice. <laughs> Scottish Terrier. Let's hear a bite, please. <laughs> With their heavy whiskers and eyebrows Thank and short body, Scottish Terriers are one of the oldest and most instantly recognizable of the Terriers. Playful as puppies, they grow into dignified adults. They are likely to become attached to one person and lead a life of quiet dignity dedicated to that companion. Despite their sometimes reserved nature, the Scottie remains a true Terrier. This is Scottish Terrier number take 10. Her, take her down and back, please. About halfway. I was going to say the Scottish Terrier, instantly recognizable. This is one that you knew, huh? This is the one, yeah, you see it, <laughs> and you're like, I see them all the time. Yep, you they're know? very popular. They're compact, short-legged, sturdy little dogs, bright, dark eyes. So that's with a nice, long head, eyebrows. Definitely a fan favorite in, mm -hmm. in here. Thank you, ma'am. Tansy's room. the number one owner handled Scottish Terrier. Her mama says she's a little stubborn. We heard that earlier. <laughs> <laughs> Sky Terrier. Growing up in the rugged lands of Skye, a northwestern Scottish island, Sky Terriers were a hardworking rodent exterminator for hundreds of years. Their glossy, flowing coat, which may cause it to look like a dog of luxury and privilege, in reality, served them as a protection, not only from the damp cold, but also from the bite of the animals that they pursued. This is Sky Terrier, number seven. This is Chili Dog. I mean, it almost looks like a cartoon come to life. They're amazing, amazing. right? Amazing. Very unique characteristics about this breed with the big ears, the long, low body. Long, beautiful, profuse coat. This is Chili Dog. Down back, please. It looks like someone laid a blanket <laughs> on top of Chili Dog and the ears sort of pop it up. <laughs> yep. That coat protects them from the elements. They're a very fearless breed. They're devoted to their owners. They're supposed to be twice as long as they are high. I'd say Chili Dog fits mm -hmm. that bill. Yep. It's supposed to have nice high head carriage. You see that right there? Looks like a sturdy dog, too. Yes. Like substantial. Yep. And the, co the coat keeps them from, you know, protects them from the cold and from the bites of other animals when they're out doing their work. Dandy Dinmont Terrier. Hailing from the same hilly border between Scotland and England as the Border Terrier, Dandy Dinmont Terriers get their name from a character in Sir Walter Scott's 1814 novel, Guy Mannering. Dandies are one of the many terrier breeds bred to hunt otter and badger. This delightful and entertaining dog is a clown, as well as a faithful companion. This is Dandy Dinmont Terrier, number 23. <laughs> Little tail wag at the end. There's McGregor. He just started in the showbiz. Today is his first best of breed. He's wow. a new champion. He's from New York City. So you should be used to crowds. <laughs> That's right. It's one of the rarest breeds. They have a very unique shape. It's a series of curves. There's down over the shoulders, arches over the loin. They have these deep melancholy eyes. They're a little less high strung than some terriers, a little more mellow. Thank you. Love that soft top knot of hair on top of their head. So cute. From New York, be a good apartment dog then? Absolutely, maybe? yep. They don't require tons of exercise. They're a little more mellow than some. Thank you, bite, please. West Thank Highland you. White Terrier. The West Highland White Terrier is one of the Scottish breeds of terriers originally <laughs> differentiated by their color alone. The Westie is all terrier. A large amount of Scottish spunk, determination, and devotion crammed into a small body. 
Outdoors, they are truly sporty. In the house, they are all that can be desired of a pet. This is West Highland White Terrier, number 19. Yeah, that description was perfect. A lot of spunk and determination in a Westie. And this is Hudson. Another instantly recognizable face. Look at the face yeah. of the Westie. That's one you knew too. Yeah, yeah. I think a lot of people would <laughs> know people the Westie. Look at those little sparkling eyes, yeah. so cute. And around the ring, please, thank you. Chesky Terrier. Intelligent and full of energy, the Chesky Terrier was developed in the Czech Republic and bred to hunt vermin, fox, and badger. They are active dogs that can be reserved with strangers. The Chesky sports a soft, long, silky coat in shades of gray, which requires monthly clipping to stay in good form. They are loyal, gentle, and patient by nature, making them a good family pet. This is Chesky Terrier, number six. This is India. Now the Chesky is another very rare terrier. Her owner said this is the first show that she's been in with other, actually there was other Cheskies in competition. Oh wow. They're so rare. She also won best bred by Chesky. They're from McAllister, Montana. Yep, she loves to hunt ground squirrels on the plains of Montana. She adores her best friend. It's a Spinoni Italiano. She loves to sleep under the covers on cold nights. And she's only 10 months old. Yep. Is that considered puppy or no? Yes, that's puppy. She's getting her chops here in the bi big ring. Can I see his bread, please? Okay. Norfolk Terrier. Norfolk and Norwich Terriers were once considered the same breed. Disagreement by breeders as to whether the dog should have prick or drop ears resulted in the so creation of two breeds. Those with drop ears became the Norfolk Terrier. Though most Norfolks today are companions for people, they are natural rodent and vermin hunters. This is Norfolk Terrier, number 15. That's a very cute terrier right there. That's Winston. Best in show at Montgomery County Kennel Club. Group winner at the 2018 Westminster Kennel Club Dog Show. Dark, sparkling little eyes they're supposed to have. <laughs> Wedge-shaped muzzle. Very cute companions. They're like little demons in the field, though. They're super good at their jobs. They make great pets. A compact, nice, sturdy, small terrier. Oh, looking up at his own right, right. handler, Ernesto Lara. Well, we got another, another fan favorite. Yep, a wonderful breed the sense we're going to get the same sort of response in our final dog. This cute little Norwich. Norwich Terrier. The Norwich Terrier, the yeah, prick-eared breed, was developed in yeah, England in the late 19th century from a variety of working terriers. Valued for their small size, the Norwich is quick, sharp, and ever-moving. Fond of children, they make loyal, affectionate companions. This is Norwich Terrier, number 15. This is Kyle from Tulsa, Oklahoma. And again, our final terrier. It's a very quick-witted, sharp little terrier. They're social, but they're also fearless. Very loyal to their owners. A stocky little breed. There's a prick ears, a slightly foxy expression oh, sure. you'll oh, see oh, on oh. his face. Nice cobby little breed. Yeah, another fan favorite. Yep, they're wonderful. 
I got to spend a little time meeting the breed today. Yep. And my family had a few of them when I was growing up. They're they're great little rubber. tough little dot guys. They're fun. And here we go. One last run around, and then we're gonna start paring him down. <laughs> He's got his work cut out for oh, him. Sure Dr. Does. Klein does. Sure does. Seems to be repeating the pattern. He started by taking a good look at all the yep. dogs. Now he's going to remember everything he liked about all the dogs he just saw. He'll be like, oh, yeah, I loved that dog's head. Oh, yeah, that dog had great feet. Oh, yeah, that dog's top line's perfect, right? Like, refresh your memory about the key things that you loved about the dogs. Helps you narrow it down. That's a great point because you can lose those things if you don't look again because you're focusing on each dog That's as right. they come. You focus on the dog in front of you. And you want to make Give sure the dog that went first has the same chance as the dog that went last. Give each one your full attention and then you go back and refresh your memory. Yeah. And then you usually make a cut. And the terrier group at do dog shows across the country, you don't always see a full terrier group with every breed represented because some of these breeds are so rare. The opportunity to see all the terriers in one spot is just amazing. So we have the Airedale and the soft-coated Wheaton and the Amstaff and the Irish Terrier and the Staffordshire Bull Terrier. The Welsh. We've got the Mini Schnauzer, the Welsh. There's Karen. And the Norfolk and the Norwich. So that's 12. That's a big group, but this was a big group of terriers, big 31 group of them. Of really good terriers. Good place to start, whittle it down. You think he might cut it down again from 12? No, or probably not. Okay. Nope. It'll take a little more time, that's for sure. Maybe he's going to get ready to move them around. Hard to know. He's taking a good look. Yeah. But he's not very verbal, so it's we'll have to see what he does next. He's really concentrating. He <laughs> near Dale tail wagon, so cute. <laughs> Looking up close at their heads. So, so many terriers have to have a certain expression. This has to be nerve-wracking for the handlers. Yes, you're nervous, but you're actually more just focused on making sure that the moment the judge turns towards your dog, that you have it looking its absolute best. All right, one at a time around the ring, please. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> okay, here we go. Once around the ring. Out of the spotlight, onto the red carpet. Here we go with the Airedale. Other than the Airedale, they're mostly medium to small size, these yep. terriers. But I get the sense, tell me if I'm wrong, that they don't realize they're small. Oh, no, they think they're big, big dogs. They're tough and determined. Very fun group of dogs. American Staffordshire Terrier. Goes the Irish Terrier. There's Pie. There's 
Staffordshire Bull Terrier, Stan from Canada. It's from Montreal. Mm hmm. There's the miniature Schnauzer. <laughs> the beard is <laughs> cracks. Me Beautiful, up. right? Oh yeah, it's great. It's expressive. Yep. The wire fox terrier. It's the Welsh terrier. It's the Karen. There's Nathan. They have the Norfolk Terrier. The yeah, Norfolk Terrier's got some fans That's in the Winston. house. Yeah. The Winston is actually the Winston. Winston. <laughs> the Winston. Yeah. And here's the Norwich Terrier. <laughs> and Isaac's got some fans as well. Yeah. He knows it. He looks like he's uh, milking it just a little bit. Mm -hmm. I'm going to slow this face. thing down. Yeah. He knows where he's going. <laughs> Still thinking. It's so hard when you have such so much good quality. And careful deliberation is the only way you're going to get to the final four. Well, Dr. Jerry Klein is certainly deliberating carefully. It's a very important job. It is. <laughs> Here at the national championship. So the winner goes on to best That's in show. Right. And rounds out our field of seven vying for the top prize. Okay, he's made a decision. Here we go. Right. Now, Judge Klein will select fourth through first place. We begin with fourth place. The Norfolk Terrier. Norfolk Terrier, fourth. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much. Here you go, sir. Staffy Bull. Staffordshire Bull Terrier, number three. Thank you very much. Here, ma'am. Thank you. Miniature Schnauzer. <laughs> Here you go, ma'am. No, oh, he's barking Stop at the you. camera. Yeah. <laughs> Here you go. I didn't want second place. Here you go, man. That's what he's saying. <laughs> he's saying I'm very brave. Well, and first I'm going of all, there's a wild group. And I'd like to thank the judges that sent these remarkable dogs into the group. And tonight's Terrier winner is the Narch Terrier. Yeah. There you have it. <laughs> the Norwich Terrier, the fan favorite, <laughs> is also the favorite of the judge. Congratulations. Owner Ellen Lucas, handler Taffy McFadden. Dr. Klein has chosen group first, the Norwich Terrier. Second, the Miniature Schnauzer. Third, the Staffordshire Bull Terrier. Fourth, the Norfolk Terrier. Norwich Terrier. And there's Isaac, the Norwich Terrier. Winning the Terrier group. The Norfolk Terrier, fourth. Staffordshire Bull Terrier, third. 
miniature Schnauzer finished second, but it's the Norwich Terrier taking the Terrier group, representing the Terriers, coming up later tonight for Best in Show. So down to the ring with the winner, Sam Ryan. Yep, with Isaac. Congratulations, Isaac and Taffy. So those moments, Dr. Klein narrows it down. He gets a second look. It's silent. It is quiet in here. You go around again, and then it's quiet again as he's deliberating. So what are you thinking as he's getting another look? Don't trip. <laughs> And you didn't, and you have a cheering section. Isaac has, is a fan favorite here. How does he and how do you react when you hear the applause from, from these folks here? I think it makes him step up even further. It, he loves it. He loves the energy. So he feeds off of it. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and he's not finished now. Uh -uh. Moves on to yet. Best in Show. Yep. <laughs> well, congratulations, Isaac. So we'll see you in just a little bit, okay? Okay? Yeah, congrats. Back to you guys. All right, Sam, thank you very much. Here's one more look at Isaac, the Norwich <laughs> Terrier. Looking super proud of himself right there. <laughs> <laughs> Shake it off, yeah. man. You got to come back. Because Isaac is going to represent the Terriers for best in show. Our lineup is set. Gina. It's insane. <laughs> we have a beautiful French Bulldog, a gorgeous Whippet, a beautiful Pug, the Weimar honor Kevin, Sammy Corita, Border Collie Slick, and now a Norwich Terrier, Isaac, to round out the seven. Going to be quite oh, yeah. a challenge for the judge <laughs> for best in show, but still to come, we have our final ace award of the weekend, and of course, best in show. That's coming up next at the AKC National Championship Dog Show. We love our pets and what they eat out of is just as important as what they eat. That's why WeatherTech developed the Pet Comfort Feeding System, entirely non-toxic and lead-free, made from 100% U.S. stainless steel and the only pet bowl certified by the NSF. The stand and mat are made from an FDA-approved material enhanced with antimicrobial and antifungal additives. It all adds up to a completely non-toxic feeding system for your pet. Find out everything you need to know at PetComfort.com. This is no thing you need to know at PetComfort.com. This is no ordinary puppy. And this is no ordinary story. This is the tale of a hero in the making. He is born, raised, and fed to make the impossible possible. Because he is no ordinary dog. He's a Yukonuba dog. Feed the extraordinary in your puppy and make your dog a Yukonuba dog. Joined now by Darren Kassabaum, the co-owner of Cosmos Corporation. You've joined the national championship as the TropiClean brand. Tell me, how did TropiClean come to be? Yeah, my parents started the company back in the 80s. They had a real heart to uh, generate resource to help take care of kids who maybe have challenges and, and uh, specifically orphans. My brothers and I came in the 90s and we realized that most people were bathing their pets with um, dishwashing liquid. And we thought, you know, there's got to be a better way. So we created TropiClean, which is a brand of natural grooming products, you know, made from things like coconut and papaya. So the success that TropiClean has had has really enabled us to fulfill my parents' lifelong dream, to start an orphanage in Guatemala, wow. where we actually care for about 75 kids and um, it provides you know health care food housing education the most recent thing is we just built a brand new school it is the nicest in the region and uh, so not only are we seeing the kids hearts healed but also giving them a first-rate education so really the success of tropicling and the innovation and the culture has resulted in seeing my parents dream fulfilled oh, special and that's fantastic thank yeah. you so much darren thank you Back to the Orange County Convention Center in Orlando. It's the AKC National Championship Dog Show presented by Royal Canin. And here's a Tropiclean trivia question. And this breed does not bark. Do you know which breed that is? We'll give you a couple choices. Senji, Cotton Atelier, Finnish Spitz, the Lhasa Apso. It's the Basenji.
That's presented by Tropiclean. Mary Beth O'Neill began showing dogs as a teenager. Today, the Vice President of Sports Services at the AKC gets the most joy from her work developing young people through a juniors program that has grown exponentially. Every year at the National Championship, Mary Beth coaches almost 200 young handlers, awarding some with special scholarships. We caught up with Mary Beth and some of her recent honorees. AKC is pleased to be able to award the scholarships for the top five juniors. Working with the juniors has just been a great opportunity to see these young people develop their skills and become involved with their dogs. Second place is being awarded to Avery Adams. I competed in the juniors agility and the juniors obedience and rally and then I'm competing in the Real Obedience Classic and the Real Agility Invitational. Fourth place scholarship is being awarded to O'Malley McGee. O'Malley, I know you're here. I show pointers and vishlas. Not only do I show them in juniors and breed, I also hunt with them. The involvement with an animal and that compassion and being able to take care of it. And then it's the interaction with other people and it's learning to win gracefully and lose with dignity and respect is what we hopefully are teaching them. I can definitely say that this has made me so much more mature and learn that, you know, not everything's going to go your way and that, you know, some people are really great people and they'll help you no matter what. It's not just about the dog and how pretty it is. It's about your bond and how well you present the dog. Oh, it's very special. In fact, I routinely receive announcements of their graduations from college, or I actually participated in one of the students' white coat ceremony at vet school. It means so much to me. I've known these kids growing up, and you know, they're now part of my life. Little Terry. So many handlers we've seen tonight who started as juniors, and now it's time for our fifth and final ace award. Ladies and gentlemen, now in the ring, our AKC Senior Executive Vice President, Mr. Jay Wax. And for Yukonuba, Pro Sales Manager, Mr. Brett Vollmer. And tonight's final ace recipient in the category of Uniform Services Canine, we have Copper a two-year-old black and tan coonhound owned by Officer Christopher Hathaway of Cocoa, Florida. For those of you who don't know, this is Canine Copper. Copper came to us about eight months ago. Two-year-old black and tan coonhound Copper is a therapy dog and a regular on the staff at the police department in Cocoa, Florida, where he works beside his owner, Officer Chris Hathaway maybe would be helping or having to question a child. In a traumatic experience where someone is really stressed out and all of the police officers in uniform show up, they might not want to talk to us. So Copper was a great opportunity to walk in and say, hi, this is my friend Copper. He's here to help you. And it helps the detectives get the information that they need. Part of Copper's job is outreach, which includes frequent visits to schools. Officer Hadaway remembers a specific encounter with a second grade boy in which Copper's presence was critical. Okay. Say hi. Come pet him. We're sitting in a circle and they, they just touch him and they say, you know, what do I do when my mom beats my dad? And as an officer, you got to have an answer to that. And it provided an opportunity to say, well, if there's something bad happening, just close your eyes and cover your ears and think about Copper. And the little boy looked at me right in my face and he said, I can do that. By simply doing his job, Copper is changing the image of policing in his hometown. As we move around through the public, everybody knows Copper. And that's a great face for a police department. And what I think you'll continue to see is different agencies throughout the United States will look at dogs in a different capacity, that they won't just be that cool, sleek German Shepherd or Belgian Malinois that gets out and runs and goes and brings the bad guy back, but they sit in courtrooms and help people with anxiety or people that have to relive a traumatic experience to tell that story so that the victim can get their justice.
Ladies and gentlemen, it is our pleasure to present to you the 2018 American Kennel Club Humane Fund Ace Award Uniformed Canine Recipient, Copper. How about Copper and Officer Christopher Hathaway as well? Amazing dogs doing amazing things. This is what we're all about Thank here. Thank you. And a fantastic reception from everyone here <laughs> tonight. And how about all of the Ace Award winners? Five in total, each exemplary in their own way mm -hmm. and changing the world for the better in their own way. Absolutely. Who can forget Teddy the Poodle or Cole the Golden Retriever? Inspector Gadget the Bloodhound, Samson the Golden Retriever, and we just saw Copper the Black and Tan Coonhound. And we are getting close to awarding this, the crowning champions trophy. Here is what is at stake. The crowning champions trophy, a year's supply of Royal Cane and $50,000, the title of best in show. This is a Labrador Retriever. This is a Golden Retriever. They may seem similar, but when you take a closer look, the details tell a different story. These dogs eat, digest, and process energy differently. At Royal Canin, we obsess over these details. So we developed over 200 specific formulas for cats and dogs, because precise nutrition can transform your pet into a magnificent animal. Royal Canin, incredible in every detail. There are certain breeds that are going to be great apartment dogs if you live in New York City. There's going to be other breeds that are fabulous working dogs for you if you're out on a ranch. He is my best friend. AKC.org is the best place to start because they have all the information about any breed you can think of. What's not to love about this face? <laughs> this is no ordinary puppy. And this is no ordinary story. This is the tale of a hero in the making. He is born, raised, and fed to make the impossible possible. Because he is no ordinary dog. He's a Yukonuba dog. Feed the extraordinary in your puppy and make your dog a Yukonuba dog. The 2018 AKC National Championship Dog Show is brought to you by the American Kennel Club, home for all things dog. By Royal Canin, incredible in every detail. Yukonuba, that's a Yukonuba dog. By Tropiclean, you make the moments, we make them fresh. And by WeatherTech, pet comfort by WeatherTech. And we are back from the Orange County Convention Center in Orlando, Florida. It is time for Best in Show. And the Best in Show will get their name up high along with all of the other champions from years gone by from the AKC National Championship. Who amongst the final seven will join that illustrious group. From the non-sporting, we have Princeton the French Bulldog, Whiskey the Whippet and the Hound, Kevin the Weimaraner, Carita the Samoyed, the Border Collie Slick, and Isaac the Norwich Terrier. from over 5,000 dogs beginning 
to 192 breed winners to seven group champions. And now we get to best in show. Gina, how does a judge figure out between these seven amazing dogs who is the best of the best well it comes down to the written standard of excellence for each breed and our judge has, knows all of those in his head and he's going to be able to figure out which dog most closely represents that standard but it's also going to be who gives him goosebumps who goes around with energy who does he love at the end of the day and who feels the most pressure the dog the handler the owner or is it really us watching to figure out who's going to win? It's a this combination. <laughs> you hope that you're, if you're nervous, it doesn't go down the lead to the dog. So you try to stay calm, but you try to get all the energy up in the dog at the same time. So it's a challenge, but it's best in show. So you're happy to be there. <laughs> Indeed. You can feel it within you. It is time for best in show. And now we turn to our PA announcer, Kevin Skinner. And now the moment we have all been waiting for. Best in show. Seven group winners. America's largest dog show. And for one winner, the richest prize in the sport of dogs, $50,000. Our stewards for best in show are from the AKC. Mr. Ronald H. Meneker, AKC chairman of the board. Dr. Thomas Davies, AKC Ch Vice Chairman and Executive Vice President for Sports and Events, Mr. Doug Lundgren. Now, please welcome to the ring, Mr. Ronald H. Meneker, AKC Chairman of the Board. Mr. Dennis B. Sprung, AKC Chief Executive Officer, President and Show Chairman. And tonight's best in show judge, Mr. Elliot Weiss. Thank you. Thank you. Ronald, thank you. Thanks thank for you. having us on board tonight. See you in a little while. Follow him out. Ladies and gentlemen, best in show. From the sporting group, the Weimaraner, judged by Mr. Thomas H. Bradley III. From the Hound group, the Whippet, judged by Mr. William P. Shelton. From the working group, the Samoyed, judged by Dr. Anthony D. DiNardo. From the Terrier Group, the Norwich Terrier, judged by Dr. Jerry Klein. From the Toy Group, the Pug, judged by Miss Beth Swigert. From the non-sporting group, the French Bulldog, judged by Mrs. Barbara Dempsey Alderman. From the herding group, the Border Collie, judged by Mrs. Dorothy N. Collier.
And so we begin. <laughs> Elliot Weiss with the fantastic honor judging best in show. He began showing dogs in 1963. He's been a judge since 1993. Judges Terrier Sporting Toys, Judge Westminster and Best in Show in 2010. I'm just going to start with his relax. first dog. From the sporting group, the Weimariner. And this is Kevin, the Weimariner. Three-time national specialty winner, the youngest national specialty winner in the history of the breed, winning at 10 months of age. He's now three years old. The gray ghost, we call them. Beautiful, muscular, strong, Some agile. Thank you. Toward that sign and back, please. Not too fast. What does Mr. Weiss need to see from Kevin the Weimariner? Well, energy. Bone, substance, muscle tone, performance, correct head, level top line, beautiful performance. There you go. Thank you, going right, right to the end. Thank you, sir. <laughs> From the Hound Group, the Whippet. This is Whiskey the Whippet. Whiskey's, whiskey has been chomping up most everything that he comes across in competition in 2018. Has, a, has had a very busy night. Won Best Bred by Exhibitor and Show a little while ago this evening. Won a few best in shows earlier this week down here in Florida. He is currently the number one hound in America. He won 22 best in shows so far. This is breeder owner handler Justin Smithy. He's up and down. Two that side. with all that whiskey's won. <laughs> would it feel incomplete for the owner handler without a best in show? Well, he's gotten lots of best in shows. Does he want to be the national champion? Absolutely. The are there six other dogs out there that are equally amazing? Absolutely. Thank you. Down there, come on the edge. Get long opportunity to watch him go all around this great big ring. Thank you. From the working group, the Samoyed. And this is Quarita, the Samoyed. Very expressive face, so intense. Dark sparkling eyes. The smiling Sammy. Mm -hmm. You heard her handler say earlier, she just, you look at her and you know what she was bred to do. She could do it all day long. Did you? Look at that beautiful that white song. coat. <laughs> and away she goes. And that Sammy smile all the way. <laughs> that is an irresistible face. Beautiful. 
And it could just be an irresistible dog. Well, Andrew Green, the handler, is hoping so. That's for sure. Court again, take a run around. Thank you, sir. From the Terrier Group, the Norwich Terrier. This is Isaac, the Norwich Terrier. Congratulations. Isaac had the shortest wait for best in show, yep. and that the Terriers were the final group to go. Yeah, put a little less time to relax than the other dogs. But he's a feisty little terrier. He's got it, the temperament for it. Isaac is a multiple best in show winner. Handler Taffy McFadden. I mean, could it be an advantage for he's Isaac? He's already in, he's been in game mode all the way oh, through. Yeah. He's already up and ready, right? Yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> Foxy little expression, little prick ears. A lot of terrier attitude. <laughs> terrier tood. Yep. Thank you. I think I'm running on the edge to the end. Thank you. From the toy group, the pug. So this is Biggie, the pug. From Chapel Hill, North Carolina, the number one toy dog, all systems. Number four among all breeds. trying to make history, not only for pugs, but in the toy group. As no one from the toy group has ever won Best in Show. That's right. He's trying to break that streak and become the first toy dog to win Best in Show at the National Championship. Biggie certainly has his own charisma. It is on display in the championship ring. Big dog and a little package. That's what they're supposed to be. He just nailed it, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Go along the end to the end of the line, if you will. Look at that face. Thank you. From the non-sporting group, the French Bulldog. Princeton, the Frenchie. From Santa Barbara, California. He's had the longest rest of all of the dogs because it was the first group of the night on Saturday night. Princeton is the number one non-sporting dog, top male Frenchie in the history of the breed, 38 best in shows, 145 group ones, no slouch. Thank you for showing oh, Join that sign in there.
One last look at yep. Princeton. There's a lot of detail in the head Thank to study you. in this breed, so it's taking a nice long look. And away he goes. Thank you very much. From the herding group, the Border Collie. Last but certainly <laughs> not least, it's slick. Look at the attention. Such an intense breed. So smart, so agile, so beautiful. <laughs> Let's remind people that Slick is the top winning border collie in the history of the breed. 50 best in shows, two national specialties, over 100 group ones. Thank you. Yes, and Sorry trying to that. become the national champion. These are indeed the best of the best. Absolutely. Such a difficult task. <laughs> Mr. Elliot Weiss, as Slick takes his run. Beautiful. Run around now. <laughs> Thank you. We'll take <laughs> another look, and this is quite literally a unique experience for a judge doing best in show, right? Well, you only get to do it once here, so this is, yes, this is his moment. This is one of the most beautiful best in show lineups I've seen. Absolutely gorgeous dogs. And much like each of these dogs will be tied to the 2018 national championship by how they compete I'm and how they finish. I'm going to ask you one at a time to go out and let your dog stand on his own. And when I say just come around and come back in line, wind up where we are now. Right in the middle here, if you will, sir. I imagine Elliot stand, Weiss please. will be synonymous with whoever ends up winning the best Absolutely. in show. Absolutely. You'll never forget the judge that gives you best in show at the national championship, that's for sure. And now right around to the end, please. It's Kevin, the Weimariner. Thank you. Thank you. There's Whiskey, the Whippet. Thank you very much. Guarita, the Samoyed. Very pretty. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, sir. Still smiling. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Can't stop, won't stop. Mm, so nice. Same here. <laughs> <laughs> right, I have a huge smile on my face right now. <laughs> I'm pretty happy where I'm sitting. I think Isaac, the Norwich <laughs> Terrier, is feeling the love. Nailed it right there. 
Nice big smile yeah. out of the little guy as well. He knows it. <laughs> Thank you, man. Here comes Biggie the Pug. Oh, look at that. <laughs> Some attitude right there. <laughs> they are all so thank you very top they notch. They are on fire. They all are. Just look at them go. Oh, so beautiful. Well done. Thank you. Princeton, the French Bulldog. Go right around now, if you will. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. What's Slick going to do? It's going to be awesome. That's what he's going to do. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, sir. Let's go right yeah. around. <laughs> yeah, I do not envy this man's choice. <laughs> this is so hard. Weiss has He's made ready. his decision. Oh, Will our I presenters, for the best in show ceremony, please enter the ring. Our presenters this evening are Mr. Dennis B. Sprung, AKC Chief Executive Officer, President, and Show Chairman. Mr. Ronald H. Menneker, AKC Chairman of the Board. Dr. Thomas Davies, AKC Vice Chairman of the Board. Mr. Doug Lundgren, AKC Executive Vice President of Sports and Events. Mrs. Cammie Eckert, President, Royal Canaan USA. Mr. Jason Taylor, Assistant Show Chairman and Pro Sales Director, Royal Canaan USA. And Mr. David Everson, Chief Marketing Officer, Royal Canaan, USA. Mr. Weiss will select Reserve Best in Show, followed by Best in Show. Thank you. First, Reserve Best in Show. On behalf of the American Kennel Club and Royal Canaan, I want to thank you all for entering, first of all. This is a room filled with beauty right now. You could say that again. <laughs> Reserve best in show this evening will go to that beautiful Sammy bitch right now. <laughs> Mr. Well, Weiss has selected the show. Samoyed. Reserve best in show. Mr. Sprung, may we have the best in show rosette, please? Thank you.
Once again, congratulations to each of you for arriving here. Tonight, this goes to the Whippet. Oh, Whiskey the Whippet! Congratulations to the Whippet. History has just our been new made. AKC it's only National the dog Champion. In the history of the National Champion that's won both Best in Show and Best Bred by Exhibitor in the same year. Whiskey has made history tonight. So Whiskey the Whippet takes best in show and is the 2018 AKC National <laughs> Champion. And how about that? Not much of a surprise, to be honest, because Whiskey has been wiping it clean all week. Been winning left and right, the number one hound, now the national champion. Never has this breed won both best in show and best bred by at the national championship. It's amazing. So history for Whiskey the Whippet. And hey, reserve best in show goes to the Sammy. Yes. Quarita, She's the smiling beautiful. Sammy. She was smiling the whole time. Didn't put a foot down wrong. Congratulations to that team, too. Well, let's be honest. I mean, all seven probably oh, yeah. could have won best in show. No? Easily. All seven have won hundreds of best in shows combined, even maybe a thousand. And so, no, there was no wrong dog to pick out there. Mm -hmm. Whiskey just did the right stuff tonight. Couldn't put a foot down wrong. Congratulations. From over, over 5,000 dogs, 192 breeds, seven group winners, one best in show. It's Whiskey <laughs> the Whippet, and now we send it back to the ring and Sam Ryan. Whiskey, Justin, history. First time since 2005, only the second time here at the AKC National Championship that the best bred by winner goes on to win the AKC National Championship. When you think about that, and think about the beginning with Whiskey, since a puppy, can you sum up what you're feeling right now? Overwhelmed, <laughs> completely overwhelmed. It's been a great adventure for two years, and this is an awesome culmination of it all. Whiskey is looking at you, and what can you say about Whiskey and what you've seen from Whiskey? Well, he's the perfect pet and companion first, and he ended up being a great show dog as an added bonus. Congratulations. I have to ask you, you selected Whiskey, Best in Show. What did you see? This is one of these rare exhibits that you can't find parts on because your eye is just taken by the whole overall picture. The balance, the proportions, the symmetry, everything flows together. There are no parts, it's just one beautiful line on her. And she has, and he has, I'm sorry, Something that I think the breed is, is in dire need of, and, and that's this beautiful expression in the eye and a strong muzzle. They, they seem to be losing that. We don't see a lot of that in the breed. Do you agree with that? Absolutely. Yeah. Big, younger job. You know, it, it, it's the statement that, that we have that statement, you know, people miss the forest because they just look at the trees. Mm -hmm. This is just the opposite. You can't see the trees. You just see one picture. Your eye is drawn to from one end to the other. Whiskey the, symmetry in it. Whiskey the Whippet winning Best in Show. And Justin, you have some very special people here also to congratulate and reward you. We're gonna turn it over now to Mrs. Cammie okay. Eckert. She's the president of Royal Canin USA. Okay, great. Justin, to you and Whiskey, congratulations on this amazing win. On behalf of the AKC and Royal Canin, we'd like to present you with the trophy, the Champions Trophy, that Whiskey's name will be put on along with all of the other magnificent dogs that have come before. Beautiful. Royal Canin is presenting you with a $50,000 check and a year's supply of Royal Canin Nutrition. Congratulations Thank you to you much. and Whiskey both. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. And congratulations to Kevin and Whiskey, best in show here at the 2018 AKC National Championship. Let's send it back to you guys. So that concludes a magnificent evening here in Orlando, and what a fantastic year for Whiskey the Whippet, who is now the 2018 national champion. It's in the books. That dog is gorgeous, deserves its name on top of that beautiful trophy. Next year, his name will hang on the banners above. It's been an awesome weekend. What did you think about 
the description by the judge, Elliot Weiss, about why whiskey was the one. It was a perfect description of what he was looking at and why he loved him. All one-piece dog, no parts, nothing wrong, elegant, seamless, and that's why he won. So just remember, on January 1st, New Year's Day at 6 p.m. Eastern, tune in for the 2018 AKC National Championship on Animal Planet. Again, that's January 1st at 6 p.m. Eastern on Animal Planet. And thus concludes with best in show. We began the night with three breeds remaining. We finished the night with one dog atop the mountain. <laughs> For Sam Ryan, Gina DiNardo of the AKC, I'm Russ Thaler. Thank you so much for tuning in and joining us all weekend long. Thanks for watching the AKC National Championship presented by Royal Canaan. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for joining us for the AKC National Championship presented by Royal Canaan. We'll be right back here in Orlando on December 14th and 15th, 2019. Hope to see you then. Until then, good night. This is a Labrador Retriever. This is a Golden Retriever. They may seem similar, but when you take a closer look, the details tell a different story. These dogs eat, digest, and process energy differently. At Royal Canin, we obsess over these details. So we developed over 200 specific formulas for cats and dogs. Because precise nutrition can transform your pet into a magnificent animal. Royal Canin, incredible in every detail.